Tony Dungy is my guest Sunday at noon here on Channel 11. Together, this is the National Football League on NBC. Seattle, Washington, the site of the AFC wild card game for the Los Angeles Raiders. Jim Pluckett will be the starting quarterback. He'll be looking to Todd Christensen. Seven touchdown receptions this year. But the big man for the Raiders is number 32. Marcus Allen, a total offense of almost 2,000 yards. Unanimous Pro Bowl selection scored a total of 18 touchdowns this past season for Los Angeles. For the Seattle Seahawks, the combination of quarterback Dave Craig, the wide receiver Steve Largent. Largent, more than 1,000 yards receiving and 12 touchdowns. The Raiders and the Seahawks, they will try to unlock the vault to the championship playoffs. Live from the Kingdome in Seattle, Washington, it's the AFC wildcard game. The Los Angeles Raiders versus the Seattle Seahawks. Brought to you by the new Chrysler Corporation. We don't want to be the biggest, we just want to be the best. By exceptionally smooth Michelob, where you're going, it's Michelob. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy, and we're ready to go. The AFC wild card game. The Los Angeles Raiders won the toss. They'll be receiving number nine, Norm Johnson, kicking off. Surprise, Greg Pruitt, number 34, is back with Clee Montgomery on the return team. And Montgomery will just watch it go through the end zone. So Los Angeles will have the ball at their own 20-yard line, first down, and here's the return of Jim Plunkett. Compared to Jim Plunkett, Indiana Jones has led a sheltered life. And for Jim, his offensive line, Lawrence, Marvin, Dalby, Marsh, and Davis. His receivers outside Barnwell and Brant's key, tight end, Todd Christensen. And joining Jim Plunkett in the backfield will be Marcus Allen and Kenny Keene. And, of course, on that offensive set, we'll see a lot of Dave Casper as a second tight end. Here we go with the wild card. We open the doors to the vault of the playoffs. It's $70,000 is inside. Casper coming in motion, and here's Marcus Allen. Four yards to the 24-yard line. He's stacked up by Keith Simpson. Second down and six. Now the defense for the Seahawks at the Raiders offense is going against Green, Nash, and Bryant, the front three. Active linebackers for the Seahawks. Schultz, Robinson, Butler, and Gaines. And in the secondary, Simpson and Brown on the corners. Harris at one safely. Kenny Easley at the other. Maybe the key man, Bob, to that defense. And also we will be seeing him as a punt returner. They want to put some more offense back to their special team. Second down and six. Marcus Allen. No game. Maybe a yard. Third and five. Charlie, one of the key matchups we'll be looking at today, all pro against all pro, Todd Christensen was 80 catches, 70 touchdowns, uh, seven touchdowns against Kenny Easley. The other key matchup, big Bruce Davis, number 79, against Jeff Bryant with 14 and a half sacks. We'll be watching them throughout the day. And they spotted it for no gain, so it is third down and six. You look for Plunkett to throw, that means number 46, Todd Christensen, is the first man he'll be looking for. Has pressure, and it is there. It is to Kenny King, the least expected receiver of the offense. Well, Charlie, I think you hit it right on the head and was probably the last receiver that Jim Plunkett was looking for. You saw Plunkett getting up off the ground. That will probably be happening a lot today. He holds the ball a lot longer than most quarterbacks. And a gain of 12 yards, 36-yard line, first down for the Raiders. Ball game just underway in the kingdom. Perfect conditions. for the football recovered by the Raiders. Gain of a couple and Keith Butler inside right linebacker was there for the defense. And coming up at the bottom of the stack is Jacob Green. Mickey Marvin recovered it. Charlie, one of the things you're going to be seeing today is the Seattle Seahawks 
grabbing and clawing and scratching for the football. They lead the league in takeaways. Marcus Allen being hit. The ball comes free. Jacob Green, 79, and a host of Seattle Seahawks had an opportunity. They let that one get by him. Mickey Marvin was the man on the spot for the Raiders. He got the ball. Here's Marcus Allen. Cut off outside and dropped in his track. Outstanding defensive play by Jacob Green. Loss of four. Mike Fanning coming inside. Jacob Green makes the play. 33-yard line. Charlie, one factor that is not on the field today, as a lot of people know, is the fans here last week. They retired to jersey number 12, emblematic of the fans and what they mean to this team. They're certainly into the ball game here already today. Third down and 12. Here comes a double safety blitz. Side. He was throwing it away. I don't believe that Malcolm Barnwell saw the football. Jim Plunkett saw the blitz, Charlie. He knew he couldn't block it, but Barnwell did not see it, and he didn't look for the football. Double safety blitz. Plunkett knows right now that he cannot block this blitz. They have one more man coming than he can block. He gets the ball off. Barnwell doesn't see it coming. Fourth down and 12, Ray Guy appearing in his 22nd postseason game. Kicking to Kenny Easley. Easley trying to put some more offense back into the special team. As he's blocked around the corner, 25, 30, spins his way to the 33-yard line. The Seahawks looking for a spark. Ray Guy, a 50-yard kick. Kenny Easley, a 17-yard return. We'll be back. There's a style in your life No one could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going, you've always known Where you're going, it's exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. Well, 1985, Plymouth engineers a new 550 Reliant K, the Reliant Super K. Magic. The best six-passenger car value. Backed with 550 protection. Aerodynamically redesigned to be more efficient. We made the best bet. 550 Reliant. The Super K. Match it if you can. Plymouth. Best built. Best backed American cars. 11 minutes and 3 seconds left to go in the first quarter. AFC wild card game. Seahawks on offense for the first time. First down their own 34-yard line. Greg Gibbs to Dan Jornick. Now let's look at that offense as Dornick picks up five. The quarterback, of course, is Dave Craig, number 17. 32 touchdown passes. Offensive line, Essick, Bailey, Bush, Pratt, and Kreider. We may see, Essex had the flu. We may see Abramowitz in there. Turner, Young, and Largent are the receivers. Largent, of course, is the key. The running backs, Dornick and Hughes, behind the quarterback, Dave Craig. Second down and five. Seattle at their own 39-yard line. No score. David Hughes, who has been averaging 5.1 yards a carry the last three games, and he picks up eight yards and the first down. Matt Millen makes the tackle. Let's go to the defense of the Raiders. Alzado, Kinlaw, Long, and Howie Long, number 79. He'll be everywhere. Linebackers, Martin, Squire, Millen, Van Pelt. All pros at the corner, Haynes and Hayes. All pro at safety, McElroy and Mike Davis. Seattle, 46-yard line, first down. Jordan, 50-yard line. Gain of four, second down and six. Bob, let's go to the key matchup. 
One of the key matchups, Charlie, will be Bob Kreider, number 78, against Howie Long. Long with 10 sacks on the year. Really moves around a lot. It'd be a key matchup there. Another matchup, Steve Largent, number 80, against Lester Hayes and also Mike Haynes on the other side. They need some production out of Steve Largent to get some things done in their passing game. Defensive change. Bill Pakel comes in. Offensive change. Mike Tice, two tight ends. And Sid Abramowitz is in for Ron Essig, who's been bothered by that flu. Second down and six. 50-yard line. No score. David Hughes. Hughes, first down. Needed six. He got eight. Lester Hayes with the tackle. Charlie, we had a nice conversation yesterday with Chuck Knox, and he was telling us he needs more balance in his offense. The last month, they've thrown 45, average 45 passes a game. That's putting too much pressure on Dave Craig. They want to get back to more balance, and he said we're going to see a lot more running today. As you notice, the first four plays have all been runs, double tight end situation. And we thought, and there is uh, Chuck Knox, and we thought we had a scoop until we talked to the Raider players. They said he's going to run, and we picked up the paper today in Seattle. They said he's going to run. Los Angeles 42-yard line, first down. Eric Lane comes in as a running back and picks up a couple of yards to the 40-yard line, second down and eight. Was there a reason that he has made the statement this week that he is going to stay on the ground? Well, let's take a look at, at Howie Long and Kreider, the matchup we talked about. Kreider doing a good job on this play, but I think your, your point is well taken, Charlie. I think he was trying to take some pressure off of his quarterback, Dave Craig, by saying, listen, we're not going to ask you to throw that many passes. We want to spread the load to the offense and the defense. Second down and eight. No score. David Hughes. 37 yard line, gain of three. So it'll be third down and five. And both ball clubs wound up like top. But we'll see some of that pushing and shoving as everybody is keyed up for the game. Tom Flores, the head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders, their record 11 and 5. Postseason play, his record is 8 and 1. That's almost 89% for Tom in postseason play. Only one coach in the National Football League has a better postseason record. Vince Lombardi, the one coach that's better? That's right. <laughs> we wanted everybody to anticipate and let them join in. Craig going deep. Turner, he's there. Under throw, he drops it. Oh, five-yard line incomplete. Had the coverage. He was behind the coverage. The pass was under throw, but he still had an opportunity to catch it, and he could. So it'll be fourth down and five. Back at the 36-yard line official. One of the key things is time for him to throw. Gun blocking and also pass protection. Here he gets the ball should have been completed if Craig would have thrown it a little bit sooner there were not three men around Turner when the ball should have been thrown because of the delay in the throwing there was a lot of people there when the ball got there fourth down Jeff West with a 37.5 yard average will be kicking to clean Montgomery going for the corner and hangs it up takes the Seahawk bounce and it will be down juggle about the one yard line Six minutes and 42 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. We'll be back. If you've got what it takes and really care, there's a special kind of life you'll want to share. Serving your country is a special call. It's good for you. It's good for all. Not all who try fit the bill. It calls for brains. It calls for skill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. High tech and the services go hand in hand. It's a whole new world. You're in demand in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll move up. You'll feel proud. You'll stand out above the crowd in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. But most of all, you'll earn the respect of the people and country you're there to protect. In the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines is a great place to start. Introducing a Plymouth engineered with quality and luxury to challenge Buick Century and Old Sierra, but for over a thousand less. Introducing Caravel. Match it. Caravel with luxury equipment and comfort for a family of six. Caravel with the 550 protection plan and the option of turbo power. The 550.
550 Plymouth Caravel. Match it if you can. Plymouth, best built, best backed American cars. I'm Tom Brokaw. Why does Israel's occupation of the West Bank mean Jew against Jew? A report on Israel's moral dilemma, Monday on NBC Nightly News. Raiders in office, let's go to their scouting report. One of the things they like to do is run all the receivers deep, Charlie, and then try to get Marcus Allen out here one-on-one -on -one and let him break inside or out. They give him the option. They feel like if they can get him the ball out of the backfield, they can make some big things happen. And for the Seahawks, it was Connie Kawhi who made big things happen. He downed the ball at the Los Angeles 40-yard line. Raiders now have Frank Hawkins in the backfield along with Marcus Allen. No score in the ballgame. 6.42 left to go in the first bucket to throw. Right side pass is complete to Marcus Allen. A little sliding grab at the 10-yard line. He'll pick up six, second down and four. And the outside linebacker on that side, Bruce Schultz, was there to cover it. Just the play we talked about, Charlie. All the receivers going deep. Not a bad call back there. Good coverage deep, so he gave the option to Marcus Allen, hit him on a little out. Now they got a little breathing. The Seahawks, on their first offensive drive, held the ball. Six minutes and 21 seconds. They ran only seven plays, six on the ground, one through the air, but they used up almost six and a half minutes. Second and four. Hawkins, and he has stopped. This time it was Shelton Robinson, the leading tackler for the Seahawks, who was there to make the play. Now Seattle, they have been known here, look at their top tacklers. They've had a big play defense this year, but the last couple of ball games, that defense has been, uh, they've been on a hiatus. They haven't been participating like they had prior to that. They've had no sacks, and that's kind of unusual for this defense. They need some big plays because their offense is going to be a little bit more conservative today. Third down and three, 11-yard line. Pluck it over the middle, and there he is. Tight end, Todd Christensen. Key first down, 32-yard line. A gain of 21 yards on the play. Well, Charlie, if there's any rustiness on Jim Plunkett, I don't see it. Here you'll see the tight end, Christensen, just going down and finding the seam between the linebackers, and the timing of the pass was perfect. I don't see any rustiness at all in Jim Plunkett. I think he worked it out in practice this week. And, of course, Todd Christensen, seven touchdown receptions, more than 1,000 yards receiving during the regular season. First down, Raiders, their own 32-yard line. Plunkett, three of four, 39 yards. Little play action. And first sack of the ball game. And Keith Butler, who had only one sack in the regular season, got it, a loss of seven. First sack the Seahawks have had in three games. That's right. We talk about him not having a sack, and sooner than we say it, here it comes. Play action pass on first down. Puckett never really has an opportunity to look downfield. Second down and 17, 25-yard line. Four minutes, 17 seconds. That is the time remaining. First quarter, no score between Seattle and Los Angeles. Look at it. Chris is stuck to there. Two in a row. Jacob Green. Mike Fanny had a piece of it. Loss of nine. Just tight coverage in the secondary allows 79 Jacob Green to get in there. You got to give that credit to the defensive backs. They were in their six defensive back scheme. Plunkett was undecisive, should have gotten rid of it and avoided the sack. Third down in 26. Marcus Allen sweep right side. Across the 25 to the 26-yard line, he gets 10, but that will make it fourth down and 16, and Ray Guy will be kicking to Kenny Easley. Ray Guy's first punt of the ball game, 50 yards, and Easley with a good return of 17. Charlie, you know we've stated in the past that Seattle has 
some of the best special teams in the league. Kenny Easley was returning punts up to about two games ago. He is back because they need more offense from that special team unit. Good kick. Easley feels it at the 21-yard line. Guy overkicked his coverage by about 12 yards. And around 10 yards on the return for Kenny Easley. Stacy Turan is the Raider who brought him down. We'll stop the clock. 2.52 left to go. We're in the first quarter. We have no score. A 56-yard punt. Dodge announces the toughest truck warranty in America. Five years or 50,000 miles. Covering transmissions, drive shafts, blocks, heads, flywheels, transfer cases, axles, U-joints, water pumps, all internal engine parts, and outer body rust through on every truck we build. Ford and Chevy talk tough. Dodge proves it. Dodge, the best back trucks in America. That's guaranteed. I'd sure like another Strohs. No way. Alex? Two cold Strohs. <laughs> Where do you see this? Just open the refrigerator. Just open one bottle. Just open the other. Now he's pouring yours. Now he's pouring mine. Alex, you better be drinking your water. <laughs> Strohs and Strohlite fire brewed for smoother taste. Bob, the playoffs, of course, are always special. You win them many times. What's it like from a player standpoint? Well, I think, Charlie, in the meetings, the players are more attentive. I think in the practices, they get a lot more done. They run crisper patterns. They're sharper. There are fewer mistakes. And I think that the team really comes together as a, as a unit. Now, see, uh, Seattle has less playoff experience than the Raiders. Is that a factor in a game like this? I think it is for the Raiders. Of course, when, you, when you've been there before and you're frustrated, as the Seahawks were, you get a lot of motivation coming back this year. No score. Seattle has the ball first down on the own 31-yard line. Second time in the ball game that they have moved on offense. And David Hughes gets the call. Now let's go to the scouting report for the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle will go to four wide receivers, and the one they like to get the ball to is Steve Largent. They'll bring him down, take him to the outside, the other inside receiver the same route. If they are not open, they'll run the wide receivers inside, and Craig will have an opportunity to look deep and then short. Gain of four on the last play to the 35-yard line, second down and six. Dan Dornan. Getting a four, 39 yard line, third down and two. Lyle Alzado with the tackle. So Chuck Knox is staying with a game plan of running the ball. Certainly is. He's come out, ran only through. You'll see Alzado and Abramo at 69 playing for Essing, who is out with the flu. Alzado plays off of him, but you gain three or four yards. Good play for the Seahawks. Seattle with nine offensive plays. They've thrown only one pass. That was incomplete. And now, Daryl Turner, Paul Scancy in the lineup, along with Steve Larger, three wide receivers. Byron Walker's in Seattle going with four wide receivers. They're down and two. Inside handoff to Dornan. And Dornan has the first down. 49-yard line, a gain of 10 yards and a first down. Van McElroy with a tackle for the Los Angeles Raiders. One of the things the Seahawks want to do today is an obvious passing situation, run the football to slow down the rush. And they run, want to run the ball at Howie Long because he gets upfield, good penetration. They feel like if he comes upfield, they can duck inside of him and get good yardage, a good indication right there. And we'll be selecting the Michelob most valuable player for today's game. So if you watch along, see how, uh, how you would be voting today. First down for Seattle. Here's David Hughes. And Hughes has three yards to the 47-yard line of Los Angeles. So it will be second down and seven. And the clock just rolling along. 30 seconds and counting. Time remaining in the scoreless first quarter. Of course, I'm sure the Seahawks feel that as long as they have the football, they, it's going to be a low-scoring ball game in their estimation. And they, can, they want to keep the Raider big play offense off of the field. Well... Of course, Chuck Knox has always been a ground Chuck type of a guy. He wants to run the ball. He's getting back to that today. And a 
stay with it. Here's Dornick. Just a yard, though, to the 46-yard line. So it'll be third down and six as time runs out in a scoreless first quarter here at the Kingdom. The AFC Wild Card Game. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment between the Raiders and the Seahawks. Don't believe everything you hear about the revolutionary new Volkswagen Jetta. The rumors about its roominess. Want a lift? The exaggerations about its German road car handling and its trunk space. The one about the Volkswagen Jetta costing $79.94, it's $79.95. We hope this brings all those wild exaggerations to an end. Jetta, it's not a car, it's a Volkswagen. Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy. We start the second quarter. AFC wild card game. No score between the Raiders and the Seahawks. Third down and six in Seattle now with four wide receivers in the ball game. Howie Long defensively has moved to inside right tackle as part of the four-man rush. Alzado breaks through. Pass is incomplete. Alzado with the pressure. Tinted receiver. Was Daryl Turner and Lester Hayes an excellent coverage on him? This was the man who made the play, though, for Los Angeles. Dave Craig had happy feet. He was moving around a little bit in the pocket. Really had enough time to complete this pass. His initial receiver was open. Now he just needs to get the ball out in front a little bit more. Of course, when you see a man as big as Lyle Alzado coming after you, he may have some happy feet. You're happy that you get the ball away. You want to get out of there. Here's Jeff West. Jeff kicking to Clee Montgomery. Last time the Seahawks were in this situation, Connie Kawhi down it at the four-yard line. He hangs this one up. And it bounces right on the sideline at the 20-yard line. So the Raiders will be taking over on their own 20-yard line. New Year's Day, the granddaddy of them all on NBC, the Ohio State Buckeyes and the USC Trojans. The name of the game, the Rose Bowl. The best and the brightest of the bowls are on NBC. As the granddaddy of them all, the Rose Bowl pits sensational running back Keith Myers of fifth-ranked Ohio State against the Pac-10 champion USC Trojans. College football's best and brightest. On New Year's Day, America loves its sports. NBC style. There are lots of ways to communicate over long distances, but with some, you may not be able to reach everywhere you want, anytime you want. And a faraway message may feel far away. But you can always count on AT&T, the only long-distance service that lets you call from anywhere to anywhere with operators standing by. And with AT&T, your calls will sound as close as next door. So why settle for anything less? AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Sounds like there's a bear in the beer. What are we going to do? I'll be right back. Where's he going? He's going to get that beer from that bear. That's not just a bear. That's a grizzly. Yeah. But that's not just a beer. That's fire-brewed strohs. I thought we had three cases. Well, had to make a deal. Strohs and Strohlite fire-brewed for smoother taste. Scoreless ball game. The Raiders have the ball on their own 20-yard line. Jim Plunk at the quarterback. Marcus Allen and Kenny King are the two running backs. Marcus Allen. 
29 yard line. A quick nine yards. It'll be second down and one for Marcus. Bruce Schultz with the tackle, along with Shelton Robinson. I think, I think what the defense is hearing is that what they read in the newspaper this morning is going to be true. The Seahawks are going to run the football. Chuck Knox wasn't kidding. He wasn't faking his out. He is going to run. Second down and one. First down. Marcus Allen picks up the first down. Bruce Schultz again with the tackle. Mark the ball at the 32-yard line. I'm wondering now if the Raiders are going to say, if you want to play that game, we could play that game. I don't think the Raider offense is going to be intimidated by what the Seahawks offense is doing. They want to establish their offense, which is Marcus Allen and Christensen, and occasionally go deep with their pressure receivers. No score in the ball game. 13:45 left to go. First half. Marcus Allen. A couple of yards to the 34-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Jeff Bryant cut him down. Statistics in the first period. Here they are. No yards passing for the Seahawks. Rushing as we've talked about, 52 to 13 Seattle side. Time of possession about equal. It's really unusual for the Seahawks to come out and not have any yards passing. You wouldn't say that a year ago, but what they've done this year since the loss of Kurt Warner has been all passing. Second down and eight with Marcus Allen. Two yards to the 36-yard line. Third down and six, and now you look for the Raiders to throw. Joe Nat, the nose tackle along with linebacker Keith Butler on that last stop, and what a year Joe Nash has had. Preseason, they were looking for a nose tackle, and Joe Nash kept saying, what about me? I'm your nose tackle. Well, and he proved it. And the people that got all the play all year were the two ends, Jeff Bryant and Jacob Green, 14 and a half sacks and 13. He makes the Pro Bowl, Joe Nash. And deservedly so. Third down and six. In fact, 15 of the 41 players in the Pro Bowl in this ball game. Puckett goes deep to Barnwell, and it is incomplete. Terry Taylor and Kenny Easley had the double coverage. It will be fourth down and six. Back at the Los Angeles 36-yard line. You know, we're talking about Joe Nash and, and the fact that he didn't get a lot of the notoriety this year. Number 72 in the middle of your screen on the nose tackle, coming around, number 72, trying to make a game with a two- Defensive lineman come to the inside. He swings to the outside. That time, good protection for Plunkett. Great guy almost has it blocked. Flag is down. The Raiders will retain possession. The ball touched downfield in a scramble for it. Los Angeles has it at that point. It's going to come back, though, Charlie. It will come back because of the flag. Fred Young. First penalty of the ball game. Going for the block. Fred Young, number 50. Right there. Right there, making an effort. You know, this year, totally, they've instituted something. One player is voted to the Pro Bowl for special teams. Fred Young has had an outstanding year all year long playing for the Seattle Seahawks. He was voted that player to be on the Pro Bowl team. That time he came up with a... Uh, well, it wasn't a it was a negative play as far as the Seahawks were concerned, but you know, talking with Chuck Knox a couple of weeks ago when we did a ball game, he says we rushed the passer a lot, and the first time we roughed him, similar to what they did today. But for the rest of the game, that punter didn't punt very well. So you're looking at him. You know, you know that he's there. Raiders retain possession, 41-yard line. No question about the call. 12:15. Time remaining, second quarter. We have no score. Barnwell shows motion. Plunk a little play action. Deep over the middle. Pass is complete. 42-yard line to Barnwell. And Malcolm pulls it down at the Seattle 42-yard line. First down as Dave Brown is there to stop it. 17 yards on the play. You're going to see Plunkett dropping back to pass right here. The good protection that you're going to see. Barnwell is going to get open over the middle of the field. A little play action, first down pass. Right there, good shot from our end zone camera above the goal post. The ball at the Seattle 41 yard line, first down. And Jeff Bryant 
anticipating the count came across. Well, the penalty goes against the Raiders. Move it back to the 46-yard line. It'll be first down and 15. Davis, Marsh, Dalby, Marvin, and Lawrence at offensive line for the Los Angeles Raiders. Marcus Allen in trouble. He'll lose two yards to the 48-yard line. Second down at 17. First man to get to him was Kenny Easley. Joe Nash was also there. So the Seattle defense playing more as they did in the middle of the season. Because the Seahawks were winning on defense. And the wave is underway, as is Marcus Allen. Bumble and a scramble for the ball. They say no, Raiders have it. Mike Fanning was going after it. It'll be no gain on the play, third down and 17. Charlie, these Seattle players know the state of their team. They know that Kurt Warner has been injured. They also... That Marcus, Marcus Allen, the injured player. Yeah. Go ahead. But they also know that the offense is having some problems. They want to go out there and try to get some turnovers. Grab for the ball, call for it. Let's see if we detect a face mask right there. Yes. And it was not called. Oh, Ooh, that, is, that, that is uh, a tough, tough. Uh, yeah. I'm just glad that he's not injured because that's the way you can really get a serious neck injury. Third down, 17. Seahawks fans trying to establish the ninth way. That is the toughest, most unpredictable of all the way. Here's Greg Pruitt. Pruitt to the 42-yard line. He'll pick up about six. It'll be fourth down and 11 as John Harris makes the tackle. Let's go back to the play preview. Let's go back one play and take a look at this where Marcus Allen. I can't really see who grabbed him, but it's an ugly looking thing. Mike Fanning got it. Mike Fanning to see someone neck turn that much. I'm just uh, happy that he's able to walk off. It looks like he's all right. Ray Guy will be kicking to Kenny Easley. He goes for the quarter. And easily going for the left court. Easily was floating to the near side, taking the cover man with him. <laughs> but an excellent kick. It went out at the seven yard line, a 35 yard kick. When you watched Easley, you were wondering if he was watching the same football. Really a smart play by Easley. We'll be back. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. It's as easy as GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck is easy. Ask your GM dealer and see how easy it is. Financing a new car may seem hard, but once you know the secret... It's as easy as GMAC. It's easy. Today's Chevrolet invites you to take a close look at a new and different kind of sporty car. New Spectrum. Spectrum has a sportiness you're looking for. With an overhead cam engine, five-speed gearbox, and rack and pinion steering. Yet Spectrum gives you outstanding gas mileage. Plus a spacious interior and hatchback versatility. Take a close look at new Spectrum. The sporty car for everyday driving. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Chevy. Today's game is brought to you by Today's Chevrolet. See today's Chevy. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. By Stroh's and Stroh Light, fire brewed for smoother taste. And by GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. 
This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy, nine minutes, 24 seconds, time remaining, first half, no score between the Los Angeles Raiders, Seattle Seahawks, in the AFC wild card game, Seattle with the ball at their own seven yard line, first down. And as they have been doing throughout this game, just staying on the ground, Dan Dorney gets the call, and he'll pick up about two, maybe three, mark it for two yards to the nine. Second down and eight, and Greg Townsend is there to greet him for Los Angeles. I think one of the philosophies with Chuck Knox in trying to run the ball more and not throw it so much, in the two previous games this year, in, in L.A. when the Seattle Seahawks lost 28 to 14, they, they threw 12 passes, completed five for 74 yards. In the game they won in Seattle, they only threw 25 times. So they don't want to throw as much for that pressure defense for the Raiders. As far as passing is concerned, here comes the third pass of the ball. You're Craig with all the time in the world. Out of the backfield is David Hughes. And Hughes has the first down at the 18-yard line. He picks up nine yards on the play. And Craig now one of three throwers. A look at number 93, Townsend, who has eight sacks on the season, giving a little pressure on the quarterback trying to jump and get his hands on the football you know that's just as as we'll take a look at at what uh, the quarterback is seeing but that sometimes the penetration and then getting your hands up can bother a quarterback as much as the penetration into the pocket first down Seattle their own 18 yard line no score in the ball game just over eight and a half minutes left in the second quarter here's Dornick and Dornick has a yard. They'll mark it for two to the 20-yard line, so it'll be second down and eight. And Bill Pakel out of Rutgers with 12 and a half sacks during the regular season was the man who brought him down, number 71. I think the Seahawks staying with their running attack. Well, Dornick is and Dornick limping comes off out the limping. The Eric Lane replaces him. Right? It's part of their plan. I feel the part of their plan is to use up the clock. Well, I think that's the case, Charlie. They want to use up some time and let their defense create something. Second and eight. And here's Eric Lane. Lane, the captain of the special team, picks up the first down. Needed eight, and he got it to the 28-yard line. Bill Pakel with the stop. Officials take the measurement. Now they're going to ask for the change to come out. Jim Plunkett, are you surprised that he's starting in the ballgame? No, I'm not, John. I think it's a good move on the part of Tom Flores. You see the first down for the Seahawks. I think it's a good move. Tom Flores, an ex-quarterback himself. He's been through it before with Plunkett. Plunkett having won two championships in the last four years. And Plunkett, Tom Flores says, if I'm going to be in a big game, I want my main man going for me. And there's Tom Flores, head coach, Los Angeles Raiders. Oh, what a job he has done. First down, Seattle, on their own 28-yard line. Very conservative. Eric Lane, 31-yard line. It'll be three, second down and seven. Rod Martin makes the tackle. He'll mark it for four to the 32. They haven't seen Steen Large at much because there's not many passes in the game, but he's going to come back and try to get a block right there. He sees Mike Davis already gone, so he doesn't clip him, turns back out to the outside. Steve Large is a fine, fine receiver and a good asset to a ball club. He'll do what's necessary, and that means, that means blocking, he'll do it. The Seahawks, this is their 19th play of the game, 15 on the ground, three in the air, add another one. Here's David Muir, turns to the 40. To the 44-yard line, first down. Gain of 12 yards on the play. Well, Charlie, both teams are coming off of a very poor performances last week, and I think what the Seahawks saw in that Steeler game when the Steelers beat the Raiders was the Steelers really taking it to him at the line of scrimmage, creating some holes up there and running the football. And I think with the Seattle situation, they say, we're going to try and run the ball some more. I think they both came off of poor performances because Denver and Pittsburgh played so well in those ballgames. 
Here's Craig to throw. He goes deep. Double coverage. Overthrown. Should have been intercepted. Two flags are dropped. Van McElroy had a chance for the interception, but there were two flags on the play. Number 37, defense, first down. Called on Lester Hayes. You're going to see Largent right out here with Lester. He's going to come down, break to the inside and back out, and it's going to be tripping on Lester Hayes. Man coverage, get mixed up with the line of scrimmage, and then he starts going back to the outside. You saw the double coverage coming over. The penalty worth about 23 yards. Here's the tripping. Right there. Good call by the official right there on the play. At the Los Angeles 33-yard line, first down. Van Dornick back in the ball game. That is the decibel count, the sound level here in the dome. 104. 106. Now, to give you an idea, that is more than a subway train, but less than a rock band at this <laughs> point. First down, 8 of 10 from the 33 to the 23-yard line. Eighth play of the drive. Hughes spinning, he'll lose yardage. Good defensive play. Rod Martin makes it for the Raiders. of three yards to the 26 second down and 13 still no score four minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the first half and with Seattle staying on the ground and in reality the Raiders haven't thrown the ball that much that the game is moving along at a very brisk pace I think you have to look at both defenses Charlie the Raiders number three in the league Seattle number six with all those turnovers it figured to be kind of a low scoring conservative game Tight end, Charlie Young coming in motion. Craig back. If the pressure goes deep inside. from Michigan State. A 93-yard drive in nine plays. It took more than five minutes. And now Norm Johnson to attempt the point after. The Seattle Seahawks out in front of the Los Angeles Raiders by a score of seven to nothing. I think if you could draw up a carbon copy drive of what Chuck Knock wants to get done today, it's a bunch of runs and then some long passes. Here you'll see the protection, good for Craig. Double coverage down the middle, but he throws the ball to the inside of the field, and only Daryl Turner can make the catch. Both wide receivers, double cover. Good throw. And there he is, the smile of Daryl Turner. We'll be back for the kickoff in just a moment. Me and my Chevy S10 worked all summer so I could come back to school. Then I worked on making the rodeo team. Coach said, What's a scrawny economics major know about bull riding? Rode that bull and made the team. Coach said, What's that S10 cost? $59.90, I told him. Lowest price pickup made in America. $59.90 for a Chevy S10? I may be scrawny, but I am an economics major. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Looks like you're shaping up. You bet. And there is one place you're a little out of shape. Overweight. Fat. Fat? Where? Your car insurance. <laughs> car insurance? All State Update. Car Insurance Review. 
See if Allstate can trim some fat from your insurance costs. Bring in your policy and compare. We'll do everything we can to save you money. Shape up and save. Oh, nice looking insurance, fella. <laughs> You're in good hands with Allstate. The best and the brightest of the bowls are on NBC. Kick off your day with a Fiesta Bowl. Sophomore sensation Bernie Kosar leads defending national champion Miami against the unpredictable UCLA Bruins. College football at its best. The Fiesta Bowl. On New Year's Day, America loves its sports. NBC style. Watch the double coverage. Mike Davis is going to split the other safety splits. Turner's going to come from this side right down the middle of the field. The two safeties split to go double the wide receivers. An excellent throw to Turner. Good read by David Craig. During that drive with the Seahawks, they did not have a third down in that drive. Norm Johnson kicking off either Greg Good or Clee Montgomery. Good at the five-yard line. To the ten. Slips two tackles and returns to the 17-yard line. 12 yards on the return by Greg Pruitt. I'm surprised that he's back on the kickoff return team as Doki Williams has been back there with Cleveland Montgomery. But today, it is Greg Pruitt going with experience, a 12-year veteran. Looks like you're into winning. You bet. Then today, Chevrolet has a car for you, Cavalier. Come on in and you'll look. Turn it on. of electronically fuel injected power front drive agility and optional sports suspension cavalier grab one if this is today's chevrolet it's a winner drive today chevy live today chevy live it chevy where does great beer taste come from it comes from way up here from the north from the rich heart of canada because this is where the taste of black label was born rich Full body, and now brewed right here in America with the crisp, fresh taste of Canada. That's where the taste of Black Label comes from. Black Label and Black Label Light. Canadian heritage. Great beer taste. Monday, it's a very special family reunion. There's about to be a wedding on Walton's Mountain. But when a man from Aaron's past returns, her marriage plans may be shattered Monday. Associated Press voting for Offensive Rookie of the Year. Lewis Lips of Pittsburgh was one. Greg Bell of Buffalo was two. And Daryl Turner, who just scored the touchdown, was third in the voting. 7-0, Seattle leading the Raiders. Los Angeles has the ball at their own 18-yard line. Marcus Allen back in the ball game. He'll pick up a yard to the 19. And it will be second down and nine. Jim Plunkett has completed four of six passes. For 57 yards, Keith Butler makes the stop for the Seattle Seahawks. And now Los Angeles needs to see if they can get some of that silver and black magic to work. They didn't have any going for them last week, and they need to generate some this week. Second and nine, 19-yard line. Here's Marcus out. One more yard to the 20. It'll be third down and eight. You see Mar Marcus Allen right here. He's just going to go to the right side on a little give. Not much there. Good defense by the Seattle Seahawks. Third down conversions. The Raiders two of six. Marcus Allen, 24 yards and 12 carries. Defense is held to a two-yard average. Plug it throw. He's pressing it goes down. Third sack of the ball game. Jacob Green got it. Green now with one and a half of the three sides. One of the things the Raiders ask their quarterbacks to do is hold the ball a little longer. Deep pass patterns all the way. You see at the top of your screen, Christensen, the tight end, was going deep. Good coverage allowed the sack to get there. Defensive coordinator Tom Catlin for the Seattle Seahawks has done a great job with that, that Seahawks defense. Two-time All-America at the University of Oklahoma. 
And he has been coaching in the NFL for 25 years. Great guy kicking to Kenny Easley. It's another good one. Easley floats under it, takes it at the 40-yard line. And returns to the Los Angeles 46-yard line. 14 yards on the return. Jack Squire makes the tackle. We've got a timeout. And the Seahawks have the lead, 7 to nothing, 2-19 left to go, first half. AT&T is in travel. How? By helping NASA exchange 56,000 bits of information in an instant. Just as we can help NASA send man beyond the Earth, we can help a travel agent send a man across the Earth. AT&T can help get instant information about hotels, rates, flights, we can tailor a long-distance data network big enough for NASA and one just right for you. The people of AT&T Communications. We're thinking about your business in ways you never thought of. At first glance, all airlines may appear to be the same. But one gives you a special way to fly. An airline so large it carries over 30 million people a year. Yet so personalized, you can reserve your seat a year in advance. We have the seat you want, Mr. Martin. In a world of airlines, one airline, American Airlines, can make your trip something special. Welcome aboard. Something special in the air. Well, there's been a lot of talk about the crowd noise in the kingdom and about the crowd. I think they were the crowd was was up more for last week's ball game. They're not ready about this ball game yet mentally they may be a little worn out but i think last week's game they really didn't get to do all their business yeah. because denver really took them out of the ball yeah. game by scoring early in the first half and then the big turnover to start the second half they went in to score it really took this crowd out so i think they've got some stored up juices to really let flow here today seattle with the ball the los angeles 46 yard line this is the seahawks best field position to start a drop and they'll start it on the ground, of course. Dan Dornick, who came out limping earlier in the ball game, he's back in. Let's take another look at that line back. Howie Long, 75, playing over the nose, just throws Bush out of the way. <laughs> and and we told a little earlier we would be watching Howie Long and that he would be moving around to take advantage. That time, he certainly did some damage on the nose. And we come now to the two-minute warning. We've got a timeout, and the score is Seattle 7 and Los Angeles nothing. This is the definitive book on champagne. While writing it, noted author William Kaufman evaluated the finest champagnes in the world. Here's an extraordinary find, a California champagne that is both truly dry and delightfully drinkable. New Andre Brut. No other American champagne can compare. New Andre Brut. No other American champagne can compare. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class for 1985. So masterfully engineered that it can perform with the world's finest sports sedans. And that makes it exciting. Yet so conscientiously engineered that its feeling of sheer driving security is unique. And that makes it a Mercedes-Benz. The 190 class, Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. The NFL plays here. The winner of today's game faces Miami in the AFC Divisional Playoffs. A championship spot is on the line. Your team plays here on NBC. Special halftime, Bob Ahmad, Bill, and Axel Heaven. Feature Dave Craig at Milton College, where he played his football. They don't play football there anymore. And, saw and the college isn't there anymore. Oh, so when they closed uh, Lyle Alzado's college, Yanktown. <laughs> <laughs> that may be because of Lyle. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Check it down and set. Here's Dan Dornick. A couple of yards to the 40-yard line, so it'll be third down and four. Matt Millen with the tackle. Also, at halftime... I want to stay for this one. Ron Cherry, Dan Fouts, and they'll be talking with Ahmad Rashad. Seattle so far, 24 offensive plays, only four passes. 20 rushes and four passes. 
Third down and four. Minute 23 and counting. Time remaining in the first half. Seattle leading 7 nothing. Very conservative first half. Byron Walker in motion and we have a timeout called by the Seattle Seahawks. They now have two remaining in the first half. Los Angeles has three. We'll be back to the kingdom in just a moment. Excuse me. I turned off your set so I could tell you about a television from General Electric. Your set has one speaker. GE has two sophisticated speakers that are going to knock your socks off. Your set has a regular tube. GE has the blue NeoVision tube that selectively filters out room light. Now, I'll show you this remarkable TV, but remember, it's going to be on your set. GE, we bring good things to light. It's the clauses, everybody. Have a chicken McNugget. Don't worry. It's under 63 calories. Oh, Rudy, be a dear and open another 20-pack. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets 20-pack makes every holiday party happy and fun. Aren't we having fun? Mingle, mingle. Tiny Tim, tiny as ever. Take two. It's a good time oh, 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 for the great taste of McDonald's. Time for McDonald's gift certificates. 50 cents each or a book of 10 for $5. And they come from all over the great Northwest, from Alaska, from Vancouver, and uh, all parts of the great state of Washington. 117, time remaining first half. Seahawks lead at 7 0. They're down and four at the Raiders' 40 yard line. Seattle with four wide receivers. Craig to throw. Alzado gets it. Alzado had to climb over a blocker and then stretch out, and he, he barely got it. Lyle Alzado playing against Abramowitz, who is filling in for Essing, gets around him and gets in, crawls, scratches, does whatever it takes. David Craig looks around and says, who is it that's after me? And that is the first sack of the ball game for the Raiders. In the two previous meetings, they each had, uh, the Raiders had six sacks in each of the two previous ball games, and the Raiders 64 on the year. That is third in the NFL. The Raiders take a timeout, and we'll be back in just a moment. Dave Craig was a long shot in the NFL. They sent me out to throw for you guys. A free agent, a walk-on. He fulfilled a lifelong dream when he led the Seattle Seahawks to their first playoffs. My story was a long shot in professional football, but I'm here to tell you another story. A long shot in life. His name is John LaMotta Jr., a three-letter man in football, track, and wrestling. What happened to John is something that could have happened to any one of us. An automobile accident left him a quadriplegic. Doctors thought he wouldn't make it at first. Then his prognosis was of a life bound to a wheelchair. But John never stopped trying. And the United Way volunteers like Dave Craig at this United Way agency never stopped trying either. And now I'd like you to meet John. How you doing, John? Great. And thanks to you, who are all of us, John and Dubois. This message furnished by the National Football League. In the seven previous drives for the Seahawks, they punted six times. On the other drive, they scored the touchdown. And Jeff West will be kicking. Lee Montgomery is set for the return. One minute and two seconds left to go in a very fast-moving first half. He gets it off. Montgomery with a fair catch takes it at the 16 yard line. I was surprised that he had the fair catch. Well, they had a they had 10 minutes of line of scrimmage, Charlie, on an all out block. He knew he didn't have anything, but he blocked back blocking for him, so he just took the fair catch. That punt worth 35 yards. Today's telecast presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience, and he rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Seattle Seahawks and the National Football League is prohibited. The Raiders and the Seahawks each with two timeouts left. A 
Los Angeles at their own 16 yard line. And here's Frank Hawkins. And Hawkins to the 26 yard line. Depending on where they spot the ball, it's right at the first down marker. Keith Simpson making the tackle. And the Raiders take a timeout to stop the clock, so this gives us a moment to remind you to join us tomorrow as NBC Sports rocks with Sports World music video. It's a sports year in review set to the songs of today's top groups. MTV's BJ, Martha Quinn, and Bill McAtee will team up as your host. It's new, it's different, and you don't want to miss a single beat. Your kids and my kids will enjoy it. <laughs> my kids I don't even know the music, to tell you the truth. And also tomorrow, Sports World wraps up 1984, a special year in boxing review. Sports World selects its contenders for knockout of the year and fight of the year honors. We'll celebrate the holidays also in the, Ita in the Italian Alps as top international bobsledders compete in the World Cup bobsled championships from Trevina, Italy. That's all tomorrow. America loves its sports, NBC style, and they'll like the music videos too. What the uh, L.A. Raiders want to do here, Charlie, they want to obviously move the ball down the field, but they ha they're taking a, a careful posture. They don't want to turn the ball over. They want to try and get some yardage, get downfield, maybe get a field goal out of this, but also at the same time, they know they're going against a team that can take the ball away from them, and that's the thing they want to avoid. Barnwell comes wide to the near side, and Christensen is the slot back. And the give is to Hawkins. And Hawkins goes out of bounds. He'll stop the clock. Picks up the first down at the 35-yard line. It was second down and one. So he picks up 10 yards on the play, and Dave Brown was there to chase him out. 44 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Seattle with the lead, 7 to nothing. Only touchdown of the ball game, a 26-yard pass from Dave Craig to Daryl Turner. That capped off a 93-yard drive in nine plays. Jim Pluckett, the quarterback of the Raiders. Fourth sack of the ball game for the Seahawks. And Jacob Green now is two and a half of the four. Well, earlier, Charlie, we talked about the pressure defense of the Raiders. You're going to see it Seattle style right here. Tight man-to-man -man coverage. No place for Plunkett to throw the ball. He didn't want to give it up. Took the sack. And Jacob Green lost his father recently. Dedicated this ball game in his honor. Here's Marcus Allen. Allen breaks it near the 45-yard line. Marcus Allen, he does for a football what Dolly Parton does for a sweater. He makes you sit up and take notes. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Charlie. <laughs> But anytime you have a Marcus Allen in your backfield, you certainly have an opportunity to make a big play. Running to his right, he sees the hole, he cuts back, and then he's going to make a nice little move to his left. So you see the safety slipping down. But anytime you have him on the field and give him the ball, he can score. Raiders use up their last timeout now with 14 seconds left to go in the first half. It'll be third down and one at their own 44 yard line. Marcus Allen. 13 carries, 39 yards thus far. Jim Plunkett talks it over on the sideline. The conversation here, Charlie, is not about the third and one. They have 14 seconds on the clock. They want to throw the ball down around the 30-yard line if they can and possibly get some kind of a field goal position where they can go in at least with three points on the board. You know, one thing I like about Jim Plunkett, there's an old saying in sports that, that good players make themselves better and great players make their teammates better. And I think that is an element that Jim Plunkett brings to a football team. I think whenever he walks in that huddle, they know that he has led them to championships before, and he is fresh. He is leg his legs are fresh, his arm is fresh, and he has no scars. He can come in and just be a hero if he can win some ball games. Third down and one. 14 seconds. Left to go, second quarter. That's Christian. That is five sacks for the Seahawks. They had 55 on the year. They did not have a sack their last two regular season games. This one goes to Mike Fanning. We talked about earlier, one of the key matchups would be with Bruce Davis and Jeff Bryant. Fanning was in there also, but Bryant had a big, a lot to do with that sack right there. 
now with the play going back to the 34 yard line. Take a look. Another angle. The bottom of your screen is 77 Bryant. 74 is Fanning. They both get there about the same time. He just doesn't have time to throw, Charlie. Looking downfield, tight coverage. No receivers were open. Fourth down. 11 or 12 yards to go for the first down. The ball on the 34-yard line. So Seattle is taking a timeout. They want Ray Guy to kick with six seconds. To see if Kenny Easley can either have the excellent return for a score or possibly get it close enough very quickly to get out of bounds or they'll take a timeout to stop the clock have a long field goal attempt. You know, when Kurt Warner was hurt early on in the year, Charlie, they ran a lot. Now they're throwing the ball a lot. Chuck Knox said last week after they lost two in a row, we're going to find a new way to win. But I think they're doing it today with more running and more Kenny Easley on the returns. Pressure's on. Oh, great kick. Easy to just let this <laughs> one go. That one hits at the 16-yard line. Kenny says, there's no way. Not from the 16. The other thing that Seattle may have been doing, a 50-yard kick by Ray Guy. Going for the block, and if they got the block, then they would do something. Or if they got a weak kick, then Kenny would go for the return. Good point, and Easley is a, is a main man back there. I was very impressed with his intelligence back there. Whether to handle the ball or not, he let that one go. Did not want to make a mistake as the Seattle Seahawks have the lead at halftime over the Los Angeles Raiders by a score of 7 to nothing in the AFC Wild Card game. Went to a zipper company in Pennsylvania, a gear manufacturer in Michigan, and a nationwide shoe corporation have in common, they, like thousands of other businesses, have chosen IBM business computer systems to control distribution, speed order processing, and turn out products smoothly. Whatever business you're in, whether you're in zippers, the gear business, or you run a shoe company, an IBM business computer system can help. Did you ever notice that just when you think you see the whole picture, the picture changes? Technology from a company called TRW lets us look at our world in fresh ways. Because there's more to everything than meets the eye. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. Last year, Mercedes-Benz introduced the new 190 class to America. Each one has rewarded its driver with a new kind of performance. Each one an almost uncanny balance of power and handling and riding comfort. Each one a remarkable automobile, even by the standards of Mercedes-Benz. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class for 1985, engineered like no other car in the world. The best and the brightest of the bowls are on NBC as the Orange Bowl lights up the night sky. Second-ranked Oklahoma battles number three Washington in a game that could decide the national championship. Plus the beauty and pageantry of the famed Orange Bowl halftime. On New Year's Day, America loves its sports, NBC style. Okay, Bob Costas at our NFL 84 studios in New York. 7-0 Seattle at halftime, and along the way, they record five sacks of Raider quarterback Jim Plunkett. Let's take a look at the game's only scoring play thus far. It caps a 93-yard drive, a big chunk of that, on a pass interference call against Lester Hayes. David Craig into the end zone, 27 yards to Darrell Turner. For the rookie, his 36th catch of the season, and 11 of them have gone for touchdowns. Almost one out of every three receptions, good for a score for Darrell Turner. Now, Bill McAtee, uh, we had hoped on the pregame show to see your feature about Dave Craig quickly regrouping. We've decided to run it here at halftime. Last year in the AFC <laughs> last year on the AFC title game, uh, David Craig had a tough time with the Raiders. Yes, he did. Uh, you know, they're saying in Seattle that the Seahawks have played this year simply with the cards they've been dealt and won. Much the same can be said about David Craig. He has been successful in spite of the feeling that he is not blessed with a whole lot of natural ability. Week 14, Dave Craig threw five touchdown passes against the Lions. 
And in this year's first meeting with Denver, Craig ripped the Broncos secondary for 406 yards and three more touchdowns. He's the type of guy that you would not uh, show films of his quarterbacking techniques to high school quarterbacks to say this is how you want to get it done. Uh, because he doesn't set up just perfectly. It's, it's not prototype. In fact, quietly, Dave Craig has thrown 32 touchdown passes, only six times in the history of the NFL. As a quarterback, had a better year. One of those this season by Dan Marino. But Craig is the first to admit by comparison, he lacks the strong arm of a Marino or Elway and the savvy and experience of a Dan Fouts. But Craig has managed to avoid the problems those comparisons could bring. They don't do anything extraordinarily well, you know, as far as throwing the football. I don't, I don't throw the football with a quick release or as well probably as a Dan Marino or anything like that, who I think is just a fantastic quarterback. Uh, I probably don't scramble or run as good as a John Elway. Uh, maybe I'm not even quite team leader like a Jim Plunkett or anything like that. But I think I do a little bit of what each one of those guys does. And he doesn't have uh, the, the arm that some of the great ones have had, but he has great presence on the field. He has the ability to make the play. And uh, that really is, is the key. He also has the ability to scramble around and improvise, which all of the uh, great quarterbacks have had, the ability to make something out of nothing. Like his counterpart today, Jim Plunkett, Dave Craig is quite simply a survivor. He played at Little Milton College in Wisconsin, but ran a pro offense. Afterward, his coach, Rudy Gaddini, got him a tryout with the Seahawks. Number eight made it, but Milton didn't. The school shut down in 1982. Every Saturday, you know, before a game or something like that, they all look and see, you know, who's playing on TV or they talk the next day about who won. <laughs> and I can't really even get into it. And then whenever I do get into it, they say, well, where's your college and what do you do? So there's uh, not a whole bunch I can say about that. A year ago in the AFC Championship, Craig suddenly found himself with limited time as a starter and only small college experience facing the Raiders in the biggest game of his life. The Raiders pressured Craig all afternoon. And the result was not pretty. Anybody would be shell shocked after experiencing the kind of pressure and heat that the Raiders put on him in that game. And, uh, you know, I, I don't blame him one bit. Those guys were really hammering on him, and, and uh, you know, it just showed. Three for nine, three interceptions. I remember everything, you know. There wasn't, there wasn't that much to remember. And uh, so it just felt, it just was crushing. I know that we wanted to play. I wanted to play well and do everything as, as well as I could. But uh, maybe sometimes you put too much pressure on yourself and you just didn't relax and, and, and play it the way that, that you got there. In the championship game last year against the Raiders, I think that, again, was part of the learning process that a developmental quarterback you know, has to go through. You know, to play in a big game. Uh, I guess the team that ended up being the, the world champions, a great defensive football team, and uh, he was severely tested. Will you ever be a great quarterback? I don't know if I'll ever become a great quarterback, but I'd sure like to play on great teams. I think that would be the, the final judgment. Good answer from David Craig. He had been in a little bit of a slump at the end of the regular season as the Seahawks dropped their last two games to Kansas City and to Denver. Craig was intercepted seven times. Perhaps mindful of that, Chuck Knox's game plan has emphasized the running game today. Craig has thrown the ball only four times, completing two, no interceptions, and the one touchdown pass to Darrell Turner. Pete Axthelm, surprising because this is a team in the absence of Kurt Warner that did not have a single runner who gained more than 327 yards this year. But the running game has been a big part of Chuck Knox's plan in the first half. And we know how Knox must love it, Bob. Uh, Chuck has always, uh, his first preference would always be to grind out games and, and win 7 nothing or 10 three or that, that type of games. But, you know, the first two meetings this year, I felt even though the team split the games, the Raider defensive line clearly dominated the line of scrimmage. That's not happening today. I mentioned on the pregame show the dreaded blast and all that was going to be taken by Long and Alzado, a, a substance not even approved for use by apes. And the entire nation is buzzing about that <laughs> revelation, by the way. Well, perhaps it just took a while to kick in because Lyle finally got his first sack on the last Seattle play, offensive play of the half. This is the only program, by the way, approved by the Food and Drug Administration. Let's turn out to Ahmad Rashad, who is at the Kingdom with Dan Fouts of the San Diego Chargers and Duran Cherry of the Kansas City Chiefs. Their impressions of the first half. Ahmad? 
Happy holidays to you, Bob. Out here in Seattle, both teams have been playing it pretty close to the vest. I've got my two experts here with me. And one of the surprising things is Seattle, which hasn't had a running game all year. They've been talking about it all day. They come up with a running game. How can uh, how can they uh, change to get it together? Well, I think it's surprising the Raiders because of the fact that Seattle's thrown the ball 42 times in the past two weeks. Today, they've come out and successfully run the ball, and it's posing a, a lot of problems for their defense. The Raiders would like for them to pass the ball because that works into their strengths, doesn't it? Do? Sure, that's the strength of the Raiders game. They can put pressure on Craig and hopefully force some turnovers. So the second half looks like it's going to be a very interesting one. All right, you talk about passing. I've got one of the best passers in the National Football League with me, Dan Fouts. Dan, what about Jim Plunkett? It looks like they're they're putting a lot of pressure on Plunkett right away. Well, you know, we, we think about going into this game. Is Jim Plunkett going to be rusty? Well, Ahmad, he got all the rust knocked out of him and off of him in that first half. He got tremendous pressure from the Seattle defensive line, and that's really the key to any stopping any pass offense is stopping that quarterback with a good rush. What about Marcus Allen? They seem to be handling him pretty well. Well, they are controlling the line of scrimmage with their down linemen, and they are very active in their secondary with their linebackers and their defensive backs, and they're really being more physical than the Raiders, which is a switch because the Raiders are usually one of the more physical teams in the league. Duran, playing against these two teams, I mean, playing against these two teams twice every year, talking about Seattle, is this a typical Seattle game for him? This is a typical Chuck Knox game. He likes to control the football, and he likes to allow his defense to put pressure and control the game with defense and special teams. So the second half should be one that uh, the Raiders are going to have a tough time fighting against them to get back in this game. All right, both these teams are in the locker room now, and one of the things that they're talking about is that one team only has 30 minutes left to play in this season. Which team that'll be, we'll find out when they come back. Back to you, Bobby. All right, Ahmad, thanks very much. I've been asked to remind you folks that tomorrow at 1 Eastern time, it's Sports World's Music Videos, the sports year in review set to this year's top tunes with MTV's VJ Martha Quinn and remarkably enough, our own <laughs> Bill McAtee. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, a personal friend of Archie Bell and the Drell, so uniquely qualified to handle this particular assignment, Sports World's Music Video, tomorrow on NBC. The second half with Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy right after this from your local stations. The music that moved the world's heart to song. The joy and warmth of the sound of music. Starring Julie Andrews in her most captivating role. The beauty. The romance. The triumph. Winner of five Academy Awards. The Sound of Music. A holiday treat for the whole family. Sunday. I told you you like this town. Come on, let me give you the real taste of Pittsburgh. Hey, Tony, hey, is that the new brother-in-law from Dallas? civilization. Who's your favorite football team? <laughs> well, you can't pump an iron in Dallas, Texas, Chicago, Denver, or Santa Fe. You can't pump an iron too far away from Pittsburgh, PA. Pump an iron. It tastes like coming home. Pump an iron. With a good fresh head of bone. Pump an iron. Fresh because it's brewed right here. Pump an iron. My Iron City beer. If that voice inside you says, I want it, but that inside pocket says, uh-uh, time to call for a union national loan, because we're a bank that likes to say yes. 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 Ask Union National, and chances are we'll say yes within 24 hours. New coat? Yes. New Zealand? Yes. New, uh, whatever? Yes. Come see us now for a quick answer and very competitive rates. Or call for Union National Mostly Yes Loan Service. Yes. Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. This is Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy back at the Kingdom. Let's go back now to the 93-yard touchdown drive by the Seattle Seahawks. There was a key penalty right in the middle of it. Well, I think the, the play you're referring to, Charlie, is when Largent was trying to get downfield, got a good release from the line of scrimmage, and Hayes trips him up inadvertently, but yet he did trip him right here. I think you're going to see it trips him up this play gave him a first down the following play they went and did some damage and Chuck Knox's quote there are five great plays in the game and we have to make four of them to make sure we win and so this became a great play because of as you said what followed the 26 yard touchdown pass from Craig to Turner they were double covering both wide receivers not unexpected they were doubling both sides you'll see four defensive backs and two receivers just a great throw and very good effort by Turner to get open. 
And something interesting happened. We alluded to it when we talked with Chuck Knox, yes, Chuck Knox yesterday. He said that he was going to run the football a lot more. We wondered if that was really true because we found out that the Raiders knew that he was going to run. And also we found out that it was when we picked up the paper this morning. So it, there was no big secret. And we were thinking, it, was he going to take it one step further? Yeah. Well, he said after the last two weeks, when they haven't played very well, they have to find a new way to win. I think their new way is going back to the running game, even without Kurt Warner, throwing very little, and getting Kenny Usley back on the return. All right, so let's see if the Raiders can come from behind. We'll be right back after these messages and a word from your local station. Well, moms and dads the world around give their kids the same old sound. Got to go to school, be a big success. They wouldn't settle for anything less. Now they've learned whatever you seek, you'll help yourself to reach your peak in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Need a trade? Looking for a skill? They have hundreds to fit the bill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Want more school? Don't have the bread. They'll help pay to get you ahead. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Mom and dad, they'll want to shout. He's made it big. There's no doubt. Thanks, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. November 1983, Tandy presents the Model 2000, superior in technology. October 1984, Tandy presents the Model 1200, superior in value. And now, Tandy presents the Model 1000, superior in price performance. Three exciting MS-DOS computers brought to you by Tandy. Clearly superior in technology, support, and service. Available at Radio Shack Computer Centers, the computer expert. true spirit of Christmas on Kodakolor VR Films. Kodak's sharpest, most dazzling color print films ever. Dear Joe, I sent this gift because you're my very best friend, love. Santa Claus. Long ago, a new force shook the world and a revolution forever altered human history. A.D., the television event of 1985. If you're taking one of these prescriptions this holiday season, Thrift Drug knows it's all right to enjoy a cup of cheer. In moderation, of course. But these prescriptions over here react to alcohol with rather unpleasant, even fatal consequences. Do you know which side your prescription is on? Don't risk it. Call your doctor or a Thrift Drug pharmacist and find out before you go to the punch bowl. At Thrift Drug, we like seeing you anywhere but the late news. Trust Thrift Drug. Tony Dungy is my guest Sunday at noon here on Channel 11. As you look at the statistics of the first half, what jumps out at you, only 10 passes were thrown in the first half. Now, Pluckett completed 4 of 6 for 57 yards, but his five sacks, of course, five times that he was sacked will bring that stat down. Craig, 2 of 4, 36 yards. He was sacked one time. I think on, the, on, on behalf of the Seahawks, they're doing what they have to do. Uh, as far as the Raiders are concerned, they are so concerned about turning the ball over. They're not getting too fancy, but they got to loosen it up a little bit more. They've got to get the ball to Marcus Allen out of the backfield and get the ball to Christensen some. So to start this second half, Chris Barr will be kicking off for the Los Angeles Raiders. On the left, number 46 is David Hughes. On the right, number 30, 32, Cullen Bryant. The kickoff return now. And Hughes circles under, takes it at the 3 to the 15. And then across the 20 and a long distance flag from about 23 yards downfield comes flying through the air. That was the longest throw I've ever seen. The guy had to be a quarterback. I don't know which one threw it. An ex-quarterback as an official. Holding call against the Seattle Seahawks. Holding number 56, receiving team, first down. Call on Greg Gaines. And the officials will spot the ball at the 11-yard line. The two running backs that the Seahawks have been using most of the time, Dornick, eight carries for 41 yards, and Hughes, seven for 35, both averaging five yards a rush. Down to Seattle. Seattle leading 7 0 as we open the second half. And here's Dornick. 
Dornick to the 15 yard line so he'll pick up four second down and six as Dornick and Hughes is the running backs they break the quarterback large at the wide receiver we see two tight ends a lot with Charlie Young and Mike Tice. we'll also see touchdown scoring Daryl Turner the change in the offensive lines at left tackle where Ron Essig have been bothered by the flu all week so Sid Abramowitz is there Edward Bailey Blair Bush Robert Pratt Bob Kreider. Takes a lot of time. Howie Long was behind him, I think, when the ball was there. <laughs> I think Howie Long thought he knew the snap count and really found out he didn't. Right over the nose. And Craig says, I'm not going to turn around. He's back there. I'm going north. <laughs> Encroachment number 75. Defense. Now, I don't want to disagree with what that penalty is called, but I think they could call it. In Crouch run. <laughs> because he was he was five yards. Just a little bit offside. If they gave varsity letters, he would get one to the backfield. So mark the ball, 20 yard line. And it is second down and one. Here's David Hughes. And he's got it. And remember, in the touchdown drive of 93 yards in nine plays, as Jim Zorn, Chick Harris, the coach, one of them is signaling the plays in, the other is the decoy. That in that 93 yard touchdown drive in nine plays, Seattle did not have a third down. And there it was second and one. They converted first down just to see if possibly they have that kind of a drive working here. 23 yard line. Here's Dornick. Dornick fights his way to the 32 yard line. A gain of nine yards on the play. Matt Millen with the tackle along with Mike Davis. You saw Matt Millen pulling and tugging at that football, stealing a page out of the Denver Broncos and Seahawks defensive books and trying to get a turnover. He knows what the M.O. is going to be the rest of the afternoon. It's going to run him down their throat. He wants to get a turnover for the Raiders. Dan Dornick averaging over five yards to carry. Ten carries and 53 yards. Second down and one. Largent showing a little motion. It's Dornick. He'll pick up the first down as he moves to the 34-yard line. So the drive continues for the Seahawks, and again, not a third-down situation coming up thus far. Well, they, they wanted to avoid getting into that third-down situation where the Raiders can bring in their, their pirate defense, their six defensive backs, and really pressure the defense and also pressure the quarterback. They, they want to stay out of that. Dan Dornick is having a... Good ball game. He is one of the keys for the Seattle offense today. And as you saw, David Hughes and Dan Dornick have combined for more than 100 yards rushing thus far in the ballgame. Play action. Going deep. Large it. He's down. Oh, no, he doesn't have it. Thought he had it. He thought he had it. Mike Haynes even thought that he had it. I think their M.O. here is play action, run on first down, run on first down, and then go deep. You can't have anything negative happen most of the time by going deep. Could have caught the pass. It was a good throw. Tough, tough try, but Steve's caught a lot tougher balls than that one. Second down and 10. Officially, it is marked as the 35-yard line. Larger thus far, no receptions in the ballgame. Now, he has receptions in 107 straight regular season games not playoff games, regular season games and that is third on the all-time list as Dornick battles his way from the 35 to the 40 so it is third down and five and the Seahawks face that third down opportunity well now you see the substitutions coming in Seattle will go with will probably go with their four wides if they do can Seattle will go four wides the Raiders will come in with their 
four, five, six defensive backs, and these are the situations where the Seahawks want to stay out of. Third down and five with Steve Larson, Byron Walker, Carol Turner, and Paul Stancy, the four wide receivers. And the Raiders into their nickel or dime package that is five or six men in the secondary. On the reverse, this is Largent. Largent's in trouble. And the Raiders have excellent defensive coverage. They weren't fooled at all. Conservative call, but not a surprising call with the way Chuck Knox is running the offense today. Otis McKinney makes the tackle. It ended up as a loss of three yards. He said there were some running plays they wanted to get run in passing situations. This one probably looked good on the films, but the Raiders are right there to knock him out of bounds. Otis McKinney was there for Los Angeles, and now Clee Montgomery set to return the punt of Jeff West. Any kind of a return, the Raiders can have possibly their best field position to start a drive. He hangs this one up. Taken at the 20-yard line and dropped at the 21, maybe the 22. 43 yards on the kick by Jeff West, but it just hung up in the kingdom and allowed the coverage. We'll be back in just a moment. Seattle leads 7 other. Can you believe it, JT, with an $18 million contract? Sure is a long way from the playground. Think he still drinks strolls? Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. JT, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Richard. Timothy. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Oh, oh, man. This is all right. Glad he didn't forget his friends. Or his strolls. Where is the strolls? Out by the pool. The, the pool? pool? Strolls and strolites. Now that's a cooler. <laughs> Fire food for smoother taste. It starts with a subtle glance. The enticement of discovering something wondrously new. The Dodge Aries K. Sleek new styling that will captivate you. Performance that will infatuate you. You always knew Aries for its economy and value. Now you'll love it for its beauty. Coaching has become a highly scientific profession. What with skyscrapers, aircraft carriers, and other jargon, you need a dictionary just to talk to the ref. But last year, my boys took the conference. And the source of my inspiration? I steal from Al McGuire. Come on home to college basketball on NBC. The Los Angeles Raiders, first down, their own 22-yard line, 11-13, time remaining third quarter. Offensively, Jim Plunk at the cornerback with Marcus Allen and Kenny King, the running back. Malcolm Barnwell will be the wide receiver. Two tight ends, Todd Christensen and Dave Castle. Bruce Davis, Kurt Marsh, Dave Dalby, Mickey Marvin, and Henry Lawrence, the offensive line. And Casper shows motion. And the second back is Marcus Allen. Marcus with a yard and maybe two, and that would be stretching it a bit. Unanimous Pro Bowl selection of the Raiders, 40 yards in 14 carries so he is being beat on this time by Joe Nash and Jeff Bryant. Charlie you got to give a lot of credit to the linebackers for the Seahawks. Allen is looking to cut back any opportunity that he can and when you see Robinson and Butler Gaines and Schultz staying in their lanes there are no gaps for him to run through. Second down and eight. Casper in motion again. Marcus Allen looking to cut to the outside and then to come back in and he'll pick up two yards from the 24 to the 26 yard line and it's third down and six as Nash makes the tackle. The linebackers right here take a look at the linebackers one two three now the play is going to start this way he's going to try and cut back but as you'll see the linebackers stay at home there are no gaps in that defense for him to run through there's a defense a blue shirt everywhere there's a opportunity to run as a, as a trio they're just sliding with him and holding their position and don't get cut off third down and six bucket needs time has it and the pass is complete to barnwell and it's right at that first down marker where he caught it and then he was hit terry taylor brought him down so the point of the catch is a first down Kenny Easley, really the, the key, double coverage. His man comes across the field, 
Good coverage. Good throw by Puckett. Just enough for the first down. Now a request, although the referee, Dick Jorgensen, signaled a first down. The Seattle defense said, hey, let's look at the change. And there's no question. So mark it at the Los Angeles 32-yard line. And Malcolm Barnwell, are you ready for this? Here's the last series. It ended up in five punts for the Raiders. Malcolm Barnwell is the only player in the ball game for either the Raiders or the Seahawks with two receptions. <laughs> That's so kind of strange in this day is, of age with, it is. with new rules to open up the passing game. Nine and a half minutes left to go. Third quarter, Seattle leads at seven other. Raiders ball, first down their own 32. Castro in motion. Ball up the middle, and this is Frank Hawkins. And Hawkins picks up 10, maybe 11 yards on the play as Keith Simpson makes the tackle at the 43-yard line, a gain of 11. And it will be a first down as all defensive eyes are focused on Marcus Allen and not Frank Hawkins. Look at it from the end zone as Marsh, number 60, comes across and blocks on the defensive lineman Green right up the middle. Good play for the Raiders. Now, the Seattle defense has not allowed the Raiders a big play, primarily because of the pressure on Plucker. So the Raiders now trying to piece one together to grind it out. This is to Marcus Allen underneath the coverage. And a flag is down as Marcus made his cut and a quick dive at the 50 and picked up another five yards. Bruce Schultz was there for Seattle, but there was a flag. <laughs> Offensive pass interference. They're trying to get the ball to Marcus Allen. Here is the zone coverage where the two linebackers just drop straight back. He's just going to run out and hook in between them. Now, if it were man coverage where they were covering him by themselves, he may have ran a different route, but he reads it, Plunkett reads it, and then he gets what he can upfield. First off. But the pass interference call will bring it back to the 33-yard line. It will be first down and 20 at that point. See Kenny Easley, 45, doing the best he can. <laughs> Doc Christensen trying to get rid of everybody. That may have been the call. We are not sure if that was the call. Or not. First down and 20, and the crowd is back in it at the Kingdom. Frank Hawkins. Hawkins will pick up three to the 36. No, that was Mark, excuse me. Second and 17, Jeff Bryant with the tackle. Malcolm Barnwell comes into the offensive set, and Dave Casper comes out. Doki Williams is in at the other wide out. Second and 17, and the clock continues to move. 8-14 and counting. We're in the third. Seattle leads at 7-0. AFC wild card game. Dave's winner will be playing at Miami next Saturday. Plunkett stepping away from pressure, and then tries to backhand one underhanded to Frank Hawkins. Smart play. <laughs> Smart play to avoid the loss. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. Yeah. This is what he hasn't done up to this point. He has gotten sacked in this situation. His primary receiver is covered. Now he has an opportunity to move around. Now he can't throw the ball where he wants to. He sees the man over there and just backhands it. That's what you call a little savvy and a little uh, getting the job done. This is the seventh play of a drive that started the 22-yard line is now all the way to the 36. But a penalty, you will recall, brought it back. Third down and 17. Bucket rolls. He's in trouble. six side no secret here same story tight coverage in the secondary Bryant puts the pressure on him Mangiero's there in green creams him and the most sacks that the Seahawks defense has had this year in a ball game is seven here is easily 
Flag is down. Easily spins for a couple of yards, but there was a marker. 33 yards on the punt by Ray Guy. Charlie, as we wait for the uh, the call here, we see it's legal use of hands on Seattle. The Raiders are having problem getting open in the secondary, and primarily it's because their receivers. Illegal use of the hands, number 21, receiving team during the run back. On Paul Moyer. First down. The Raiders like to get their receivers downfield. They don't run many quick routes, so therefore the rush is getting to Plunkett. So the ball will be at the Seahawks 30-yard line. When we come back, they will have it first down, and they lead 7-0. It doesn't take much looking for you to know the Mazda GLC sedan is a lot more than mere transportation. At $66.95, you also know it's an outstanding value. And when you look inside, you see seats you just wouldn't expect in an economy car. You see one of the largest interiors in its class, and you experience a precise shifting five-speed. But one thing you may not know is just how much fun it is to drive. Mazda GLC sedan. Experience it. There's a style in your life No one could ever deny You're on your way to the top And along the way You've always known just who you are Where you're going you've always known it Where you're going it's Michelob Where you're going it's exceptionally smooth Michelob Where you're going it's Today's game is brought to you by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. By IBM. And by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. Mark Wilson and Jim Plunkett, the two quarterbacks for the Los Angeles Raiders. Plunkett drawing the assignment. Mark Wilson from... Seattle Shorecrest High School is waiting in the wing. And he may be able to buy more time or buy more time than Plunkett. So it's, it's a possibility that we might see him. See that first down. 15 yards from the 30 to the 45. And Charlie, in an effort to stop the running of the Seattle Seahawks, Matt Millen is right here. They put him down. He's a linebacker. He's going to jump to the inside. The play is going to come right through where he vacated. A little variation in the defense. Millen jumps. He's got to take him on head up. You can't jump to one side or the other. It was just luck that Seattle found the hole. Dan Nornick, 75 yards, rushing 13 carries. First down. They spotted officially at the 44-yard line. A little mix-up on the handoff to David Hughes. Lyle Alzado was there to wrap him up immediately, putting the pressure, and Howie Long was also there. And it'll end up at the 45, so it'll be second down and nine. One thing that the Seahawks have done defensively, and that is to keep the Raiders from any type of a field position. They really have not gotten close enough to try a field goal, and I think that's to their credit. Yards rushing, as you see, weighted to the side of the Seahawks. And Dornick is weighted down at the 47-yard line. So he'll get two. It'll be third down and seven. Brad Van Pelt was there, the left outside linebacker, the 12-year veteran from Michigan State. So now Dave Craig will be throwing. <laughs> you don't we know. expect him to be throwing. This is really a, a developing into a strange game with the rules and opening up the offense. Chuck Knox has taken it back to the old days. He says, we're not going to throw a lot. We're going to try and run the ball and hold it and contain it. He's got a 7 to nothing lead. His defense is the strength of his team. He's not going to change one bit until the Raiders put some points on the board. Run short and throw deep. Shotgun formation, but they can run out of this formation. And something is wrong. Dornick doesn't like what he sees. He turns around and calls for a timeout. They're down in seven when we come back. 5.25, time remaining. We're in the third quarter. The Seahawks lead it 7-0.
made some nice. I just got a sporty truck priced like some base trucks. The Mazda V2000 SE5. Look, it comes standard with a five-speed, radials and spoker wheels, sporty stripes, step bumper, and dual sport mirrors. Pretty sporty for just $59.95. Sakes alive. Mazda SE5. While we can't prevent all the things that happen to your phones, it's nice to know AT&T phones are pretty indestructible. And if you leash your phone and take reasonable care of it, if anything ever does go wrong, we'll replace them at one of our AT&T phone centers or just call toll-free. You can even exchange your phones for new colors anytime. So if you take care of the phones you lease, AT&T will take care of you. AT&T Consumer Sales and Service. Bob, we, uh, I think we both agreed that it was a, that was a good move that Tom Flores made to go to Jim Plunkett for this game because of playoff experience. But with the pressure the Seahawks are putting on him, uh, should he make a change? Well, the one thing that the Raiders do differently is they let the quarterbacks call their own plays. So if he changes quarterbacks, he's also going to get a change in the plays that are being called. And the running plays aren't necessarily, that aren't working so much. It's the pass plays where Plunkett has been sacked so many times. He's calling deeper pass plays downfield. Maybe some quicker stuff might be the thing to do. Third down and seven. Greg has pressure. But the Alzado pulls it down. Alzado with the second sack of the ball game for the Raiders. He's got them both. 35-year-old Lyle Alzado. They write him off every year. <laughs> Working against Abramowitz, number 69, who's having a little bit of a problem, tries to come back, but Alzado can get up for the big games, and this is a big ball game. Loss of 13, back to the 34-yard line, so it is fourth down and 20, as Clee Montgomery is set to return the punt of Jeff West. <laughs> and just had to duck under a tidal wave of Seahawks that were rolling down the kingdom. He said, oh, wait a minute, a 37-yard punt, but it stayed in the air almost forever. We've got a timeout, and we'll be back to the kingdom where Seattle leads 7 other. Who says you can't have it all? Time for you. Who says you can taste the good life and have it look good on you? Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Until you experience the exhilarating performance of the Mazda 626 Sport Coupe, you're missing a lot. Because only then can you fully understand how a two-liter overhead cam engine, a five-speed radial tires, efficient aerodynamics, and a cockpit-adjustable suspension system can all come together to create an outstanding road car experience. And at 88.45, it's also an outstanding experience in value. Mazda 626, experience it. The NFL plays here. Pittsburgh battles Denver in the AFC Divisional Playoffs. Our championship spot is on the line. Your team plays here on NBC. The playoffs continue. Of course, next Saturday, the winner here will be at Miami. And then next Sunday, it'll be Pittsburgh at Denver. So two excellent ball games coming up there. So far today, Clee Montgomery for the Los Angeles Raiders has a total, a total of three yards in punt return. Give you an idea of Jeff West doesn't kick it that far. He kicks him high, and the coverage team is right there in his face. A little play action to open up first down screen, left side. Here's Hawkins. And Hawkins from the 30 yard line, the line of scrimmage, out to the 38 yard line. A gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. Jacob Green makes the tackle. It's a little first down play action screen. Hawkins is right here. He's going to step up into the line and then sneak out here. The wide receivers are going to go downfield. A good play on first down just to see if we can get something going for the Raiders. Some easy things, some short completions just to get the ball going downfield. Second down, a little over two. Pluck it to throw. Hawkins 
as he drops the ball. Two Seahawks tried to pick it up and score a touchdown, and it was a scramble for it. Seattle finally recovered. First turnover of the ball game. take another look. Keith Simpson was the last man up. It's a good call. Short passing on first down. The Raiders lead the league in turnovers offensively and the Seahawks lead in takeaways. Bruce Schultz stripped the ball and there is the scramble and we'll be back. a lot of sport trucks, but we bought the lowest price one in America, Mazda's new V2000 Sport LE. And while it's nice to know it comes standard with 42-tone paint, radials with spoker wheels, chrome bumpers, bucket seats, and a five-speed, it's even nicer to know it's priced over $1,300 less than Nissan's or Toyota's sport truck. Takes a lot, takes a lot, takes a lot, only Mazda's got a sport truck for just 67 95 What's that Fred's getting? A computer. He can't even drive a car. He's going to run a computer? <laughs> yep, they sent him to a special class to learn how. Hope he did better in theirs than he did in ours. And if there's a problem, they'll come right here and fix it. Right here. Who was it that gave Fred such a great deal? IBM. 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 You sure we're talking about the same Fred? This show scares me to death. It's High Anxiety with Jesse Jackson. Wilma Cue Card, Wilma Teleprompter. On Saturday Night Live. Frank Hawkins, Los Angeles Raiders. Giveaway takeaway. Seattle leading the NFL with a plus 24, followed by Denver second. Miami was fifth. Opportunistic ball club. 38 yard line, Los Angeles. Best field position for the Seahawks. To start a drop. Trying to loop it to Jordan, but he can't quite get to it. Rod Martin had the coverage. Second down and 10, the ball at the Los Angeles 38 yard line. And there is Keith Simpson, number 42. You got to enjoy watching Chuck Knox. It's like a counter puncher. He's in the ring. It's almost like he's doing a rope a dope. He's not throwing too much, he's playing it very close to the vest. He's running, he's running, he's running, and then occasionally he's throwing the ball deep down the field. Gets his first turnover of the ball game on the 38-yard line of the Raiders. The first thing he does, throws the ball deep. Very conservative offense, as you can see the statistics of Dave Craig. Second down and 10. away so it will be third down and 10 38 yard line right now you would have to say that Seattle is leading ugly <laughs> well it's not pretty <laughs> but uh, Chuck Knox doesn't care how he gets it done just get it done take another look Howie Long with his big paw up in the face and just a reminder that later on We'll be selecting the Michelob most valuable player for today's game. Third down and ten. Here comes a blitz. Throw gets open. He can go for it. He's got it first down. Another of Chuck Knox's five big plays that the Seahawks have won. Big third down conversion. Last week, he was being sacked. You'll see the two wide receivers. This one is going deep. Largent will come inside both wide receivers. He's going to scramble out here. There'll be no defensive backs to make the play. The receivers clearing out man-to-man -man coverage. Last week, he was being sacked. This week he makes the play. First down. Gain of 13, 25 yard line. First down. Seattle leading 7 0. 3 44, time remaining third quarter. Good 
Going it to the 20 yard line. He'll pick up five. Second down five. Matt Millen, who did not play the last time these two teams met due to an injury, and Reggie Kendall also didn't play in that ballgame. But it was Matt Millen who made the tackle. wide to the near side. Gornick, flag is down. Gornick is down just past the first down marker. It'll be holding against Seattle. So they bring it back. There's not been a lot of penalties in the ball game. Charlie holding tight end. number 87. He's off the man that got caught. Still second down. They'll mark the ball at the 30-yard line. It's a study of concentration. And frustration, I think. It's not because he's not trying. I'm sure inside he's looks he's a. Uh, the old story of the duck. You know, a duck swimming across the yeah. water looks very calm, but underneath he's, he's, he's battling like, like the heck. devil. That's right. <laughs> Second down and 15. Dornick. 24 yard line. He'll pick up six. Third down and nine. Bill Fakel makes the tackle. This part of the ball game. Seattle has four penalties, 35 yards. Los Angeles, four penalties for 43 yards. I'm a big admirer of Tim Parker. He is one of the all-time nice men of the world. As we pause briefly for station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC-TV, Channel 4. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy, 2.25. Time remaining, third quarter. Seattle has a third and nine, and they lead seven to nothing. nine but he got a Van McElroy with the tackle and that'll bring on Norm Johnson and the real key to that play was don't turn the ball over we've got a seven point lead we're in good field goal range let's bring the number one kicker in the National Football League out on the field and go up ten to nothing pro bowler Norm Johnson 20 of 24 field goals regular season is long 50 yards his career long 54 this run from the 25 and attempt of 35 yards. Jim Zorn the holder. No gamble here. There it goes. It's good. Norm Johnson from 35 yards away. The score, Seattle 10. The Raiders nothing. We'll be back with a kickoff. Michelob Light, super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light, oh yes you can, have it all. The best thing about the new Volkswagen Golf is its German engineered handling. Actually, the best thing about the new Golf is its exceptional space. Then again, the best thing about the Volkswagen Golf is its remarkable aerodynamics. This is the best thing about the new Volkswagen Golf. Golf. It's not a car. It's a Volkswagen. Take a look back at the year in sports through the music of today's hottest groups. NBC Sports World Music Videos. Tell them Don Pardo sent you. One minute and 29 seconds left to go. Third quarter. Seattle out in front of Los Angeles. By a score of 10 to nothing in the AFC wildcard game from the Kingdom. 
Greg Pruitt and Clee Montgomery set to return the kickoff of Norm Johnson. And Pruitt will down it in the end zone. And so Los Angeles will go to work on their own 20 yard line first down. Jim Plunkett, the quarterback, jockey with Tom Flores. It's going to be a frustrated Tom Flores, too. He knows very well what's going on, what Chuck Knox on the other side of the field is doing to him, and that is Seattle has eliminated the Raiders' strength, which has been their defensive pass coverage and their pass rush, and they've done that with their run offense. And they have emphasized their strength, which is their defense, by sacking Plunkett five times. So... He's playing his strength and taking the Raiders' strength away from him. Raiders at their own 20-yard line. He wanted to hit Marcus Allen over the middle. Marcus ran into traffic. Oh, intercepted. Tried to get it to Marcus Allen. Bruce Schultz had a chance for the interception, and you could tell from the eyes. I almost had it, but not quite. Exactly right, Charlie. He wanted to get the ball to his halfback. Schultz jams him at the line of scrimmage from the right of your screen. Now it's too late. He disrupted his pattern. He's just trying to get rid of the ball now. Did that hit him in the face mask? I think it did. I think the pass hit Schultz in the face mask just as Jim Plunkett was being hit. Well, Plunkett never saw the end of it, no matter where it hit. <laughs> Second down and 10, 20 yard line. Pressure going deep, double coverage. Doki Williams intercepted. has finally gotten to Jim Plunkett throwing the short stuff. He's tried to throw the little ones. You just saw in the play before that where he was jammed at the line of scrimmage trying to get the ball to Marcus Allen. The frustrating thing was I'm going to throw it deep and my man will make the play. Well, Harris makes the play right here. John Harris with the interception, number 44. John had six during the regular season. The Seahawks had 38 and they returned seven of those the regular season for touchdown. Now Seattle throwing 31 yard line first down and here's Dan Dornan. He'll have a couple of yards to the 33. It'll be second down and eight is how he long makes the tackle. 56 seconds time remaining third quarter and Seattle out in front of the Raiders by a score of 10 to nothing. Dornick 97 yards rushing and 18 carries. There's John Harris. The only man in that secondary is not going to the Pro Bowl. That's right because. No Simpson's no. not going. Ian Simpson and it is Brown and, easy. And, and Simpson had the fumble recovery and Harris had the interception. <laughs> yeah, we'll show them, right? We'll show those selectors. <laughs> David Hughes. 38 yard line, a gain of five, third down and three. Bill Pakel and Brad Van Pelt with the tackle. And with that play, the clock will just count on down to the end of the third quarter. So as we start the playoffs in the NFL with the AFC wild card game today, three are history, and we're looking at the fourth and final chapter when we come back to the Kingdom in Seattle with the Seahawks out in front of the Raiders, 10 nothing, and that means that we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Tuesday, the A-Team blasts into action. You got that? And crunches some crooks. Then on Riptide, Murray's co-ed cuties move in. He's done it again. But can the guy spoil a girl napping in time? And Remington Steel teams up with the real Sherlock Holmes. Will their attempt to solve a murder plot lead to Remington's downfall? Tuesday. He was born at the turn of the century and grew up on Pittsburgh's north side. He went on to become perhaps the greatest sportsman in the history of the game. Art Rooney. Not just the founder of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but their father. Not just admired, but loved. A great human being whose entire life has been one great performance. And we salute him.
Pittsburgh National. We're a bank that believes in performance. It's the clauses, everybody. Have a chicken McNugget. Don't worry. It's under 63 calories. Oh, Rudy, be a dear and open another 20-pack. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets 20-pack makes every holiday party happy and fun. Aren't we having fun? Mingle, mingle. Tiny Tim, tiny as ever. Take two. It's a good time <laughs> for the great taste of McDonald's. Time for McDonald's gift certificates. 50 cents each or a book of 10 for $5. It's Face of the 80s, 1984, the most beautiful competition on television. Join Lee Majors and co-host Morgan Brittany, plus supermodel Cheryl Teagues, Jennifer O'Neill, and Christy Brinkley. A spectacular night of entertainment and excitement. A once-in-a-lifetime shot at superstardom. The most captivating models in the world, competing for a glamorous golden career. It's a sizzling fashion sensation. It's Face of the 80s, 1984. Tonight at 9, here on Channel 11. Happy Hanukkah from Channel 11. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Nikon, we take the world's greatest pictures. And by L.A. from Anheuser-Busch, sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. This is Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy as we come from outdoors of the great Northwest, indoors to the Kingdom, where we start the fourth quarter. Seattle leading Los Angeles by 10 points, 10 to nothing. And they face a third down situation, third down in three. They converted only two of seven third down opportunities. Quarterback draw. And waiting there was Bill Paquel. He's pulling out all the stops today. Giving them all the window dressing with the four wide receivers, the man in motion, hoping they'll take their eyes off of the quarterback and then the quarterback draw. Loss you know, of the yard, fourth and four. Charlie, I was just going to say it's it's a very conservative offense, but it's working. They're scratching and clawing. They got the turnover a little while back, ran three plays and kicked the field goal. And Jeff West will be kicking to Clay Montgomery. with the snap another good kick fair catch is called for and taken at the 15 yard line forty eight yards on the kick by Jeff West now that is just over eleven yards above his season average I don't understand that fair catch he had a good fifteen yards before the coverage team would have gotten down to him we expect he would have gotten at least 10 yards of that back before he was tackled Raiders ball their own 16 yard line first down trailing 10 nothing rookie of the year comeback player of the year MVP really had a tough year he had a stomach muscle problem most of the year and that is a very tough injury to come back from. Duncan has pressure finally drops it off to Frank Hawkins and Hawkins scrambles to about the 21 yard line so he'll pick up five it'll be second down and five now Los Angeles their last two possessions one ended in a fumble the other in an interception. Jacob Green has been playing well all day. 79 going against the all-pro Henry Lawrence. Fighting, trying to get in there, gives some pressure, forces Plunkett out of the pocket, disrupts the flow of the pass pattern. That is a pressure, what they call a pressure for uh, Jacob Green. Second and five. Incomplete. Todd Christensen, the intended receiver. Kenny Easley for the defense. That's the Pro Bowl matchup. We uh, stated earlier in the ball game, Easley against Christensen. That's the first time, Charlie, that Plunkett has had some time to throw in quite a while. Third down and five. 
13-34. Time remaining in the wild card game. Seattle leads 10 nothing. Flips. Two flags are down. Seahawks showing the blitz early. Wild start number 79. When he saw that blitz coming, it's just a reaction. It's one of the things the Seahawks do when they bring in their nickel package. They bring in six or seven defensive backs, show the quarterback a lot of different looks. They can double cover, cover anybody. I remember playing against Chuck Knox when he was at Buffalo, and I thought by putting my best receivers on the same side, he couldn't double all of them. He did. He did. <laughs> Third down and 10, 16-yard line. the decibel meter and the crowd noise in the kingdom if they were taken out of the game last week by the early scores of the Denver Broncos I think they're catching up and making up for it this week I understand even the fans were criticized here in the press for not making enough noise last week <laughs> and they're making up for it here's Ray God. short kick flag is down easily takes it easily to the 40 back pedals for a couple to the 38 but there was a marker drop at the 40 yard line. 33 yards on the kick and 11 yard return with the penalty to determine the line of scrimmage. Charlie, let me make a point here. Kenny Easley is a very valuable property for the Seahawks defensive player of the year. He's been off of the special teams the last two weeks because he had a broken finger. They didn't want to get him injured. But with Chuck Knox going with his conservative offense, he needed all the offense that he could get on his special teams and thereby the hands on the run back number 22 receiving team First Call Dave Brown. Go ahead. And, put, and put Kenny Easley back there. Also during the season Kenny Easley was he had some contract problems everybody up here knows about and will will explain that he volunteered to be the punt returner when Paul Johns went back he volunteered for that job we'll volunteer a commercial. We know you never think about our torture tests. Yeah, but, oh, it's just a phone. Or about our extraordinary quality control. I hear you fine, Mom. Australia's only halfway around the world. Or even about how reliably we design things. It still works. Who ever heard of a computer that works without air conditioning? You can take everything we do for granted. Because at AT&T, we leave nothing to chance. It's not a total loss. The phone still works. AT&T. We're reaching out in new directions. The up-and-comers and the upsets, the controversy and the comebacks, the turbulent world of the heavyweights on NBC Sports World. And that should be a good one tomorrow. Sports World and the music videos. All right. And we've got a good one going here, an upset working. Although it was a pick a ball game, some line said that it would favor the Raiders by one or one and a half. But... No one, I believe, thought that Seattle at this point would be shutting out the Raiders. Here's Craig, a little play action. And he goes to Mike Tice. Tice to the 30 to 29 yard line. 20 yards. Van McElroy with a tackle. First down. You get him thinking about the run, and then you throw a little save pass to pick up some yardage on first down. It's as if Chuck Knox is one step ahead of everybody else on the field. Look at this, 34 rushing plays, 
and a total of eight passes. And the, the last four games, Craig has averaged 42 and a half passes a game. Today he's throwing what? Eight? Eight so far. 13.09, time remaining in the game. First down, 29 yard line of the Raiders. Here's Dornan. Two yards to the 27. It'll be second down and eight. Lyle Alzado making the tackle. The Raiders have two sacks. That's not surprising because Greg hadn't been throwing that much. And Lyle Alzado has both of the sacks in the ballgame for the Raiders. The Seahawks have six, and Jacob Green has two and a half of the six. Mike Fanning is one and a half. Mangiero has one, and Keith Butler has one. Charlie, I have to say, thus far, the game plan for the Seahawks has gone just about the way they wanted it to. And for the Raiders, they haven't been able to put in their stretching game, where they would go deep successfully. Here's David Hughes. Hughes just keeps driving and stretches to the 23. He'll pick up about four. It'll be third down and around three or four to go. Eric Lane in the backfield for that play coming back out and Dan Dornick who had a breather comes back in. You know, Charlie, coming into the game, Dornick only rushed for 215 yards all season, and Hughes only 327. So it was really unusual that they're, the Seahawks would have this much success running the football. Dornick officially over 100 yards in this ball game. Just a gain of a couple on this play. Matt Miller for the defense. Be fourth down, and the field goal team will come in. The field goal team is not going to come in. They bring in Pete Metzelage, three tight in. Fourth down and two. This is a little bit surprising to this me. This is surprising. There may be some kind of gimmick play coming or something that we're not aware of. He may sit and wait the full 30-second count. Wonder if he can get a penalty. He's got it. If they had the snap, he would have had it. He's taking the 30-second count. That's what he's doing. He had it if the center would have made the snap. That's what they were doing. Yep. Chuck Knox pulling out all the tricks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Not the way this game's going, Chuck. I don't think anybody believed you were really going to go for that. Delay. Number 17. Offense. Still fourth down. But I'm surprised, though, that Blair Bush didn't go with a snap. Well, I think they wanted some contact. You're going to see a couple of men move. Alzado had moved before this, before this shot. He's just barking the signals as loud as he could. There you see. If he would have snapped it at that point, he would have had him, he would have had him in the neutral zone. Right. So here's the field goal attempt by Norm Johnson with a 35-yarder today. This one from the 34, a 44-yard attempt. Zorn to hold. He's got it. Thirteen to nothing. holidays from Ford and your local Ford dealer. What do a zipper company in Pennsylvania, a gear manufacturer in Michigan, and a nationwide shoe corporation have in common? They, like thousands of other businesses, have chosen IBM business computer systems to control distribution, speed order processing, and turn out products smoothly. Whatever business you're in, whether you're in zippers, the gear business, or you run a shoe company, an IBM business computer system can help. 
I remember we would all dress in the school colors. Imagine, eight girls in the brightest red you've ever seen. I don't know who looked forward to the games more, us or the players. On those winter afternoons, there was no place I'd rather have been. College basketball on NBC. Al McGuire in Hawaii on Christmas Day. Waikiki will never be the same again. <laughs> Johnson with a 35 and a 44 yard successful field goal. Kicking off to either Greg Pruitt or Clee Montgomery of the Raiders. Here's Pruitt from the one. And at the 15. Oh. Sam Mary. Men got it, number 51, and Sam took some punishment there. He's staggering it. Woo. I think Fred Young, the Pro Bowler special team player, had a part in that, that too, Charlie. Right there, oh, number 50. Oh, yes. Fred You're Young. Right. Rookie out of New Mexico State. First down, Los Angeles, their own 16-yard line, matching the number of the quarterback, Jim Plunkett. 10:42. Time remaining in the game. Raiders down 13-0. Bucket has to get some offense generated. His line has to give him time. There it is. Malcolm Barnett. Dave Brown had the coverage for the Seahawks. Barnwell hasn't been close to that many passes today. Should have held on to that one, though. It's got to be a frustrating time for Tom Flores. His team hasn't played well. They haven't played that badly. They just have not really gotten into the ball game. They haven't had any. They haven't generated any offense. Second and ten. Dropped out to Frank Hawkins. And Hawkins takes a couple of Seahawks out of bounds with him. Greg Gaines being one of them. And a big up at 13 yards on the play. Stopping the clock with 10.31 left to go. 28-yard line. Of the nine possessions that the Raiders have had, they've punted the ball seven times, had one fumble lost and one interception. Now, that doesn't mean anything to this point. They're only 13 points behind. They're going to have two or three drives left in this ball game, possessions, and if they can score on two of them, they're a point ahead. So the Raiders still feel as they're in this ballgame. Completed far side, Barnwell, and he is out of bounds. He's a secondary of the Seahawks now, dropping back for the first time. They're giving him room to throw underneath the coverage. And I don't think you can do that to the Raiders, because they'll take advantage of it. Cornick getting some air, some much needed air. He's had a big day today, but remember last week, Charlie, against the Steelers, the Raiders didn't do anything all day. Went down and got a touchdown and could have won the ball game on their last drive. First down, 38-yard line. Gain of 10 on the last play. Here's Marcus Allen. They haven't heard a lot from him recently. He reverses, looks for a little room. Picks up a block, gets around the corner. There was nothing there on the left side, and he ends up picking up close to 15 yards on the right side. Notice something about the eyes of Marcus Allen. All great running backs in the in the NFL have that great vision from the eyes. Almost a Popeye look. They need to have quick eyes and quick feet as we see Plunkett getting out, doing what he can to help spring Marcus Allen. Easily all over the field. Chased him to the left and then ran all the way back to the right. For the Raiders, that is their first running play in their last four possessions. Seattle, 47 yard line, first down. 10 17 left. Tip, it's a play. Marcus Allen went up for a toss, was high, and D. Simpson, hey, he thought, I could, if I only could have gotten one more step. The thing you're seeing a little bit here is the Raiders are pressing a little bit. They know that they haven't done much, they know they don't have many possessions left to go and win the ball game, so they're pressing a little, they're trying a little bit too hard. Barnwell a little bit earlier on a drop pass and now Marcus Allen. 
Last four possessions. Punt, fumble, interception, and a punt. Second down and 10. Seattle, 47 yard line. 10 12 left in the ballgame. Seattle leads it 13 to nothing. 26 yard touchdown pass from Dave Craig to Daryl Turner in two field goals. Hawkins is dropped. Kenny Easley. He'll lose a yard. It'll be third down and 11. You throw to Marcus Allen underneath the coverage, four or five yards, hoping you can pick up five or six or seven in the first down. I think what you have to do, Charlie, is send your people out and then find the man that's open. But the problem with Plunkett today is when he sends four or five out, he hasn't had time to look for him or to wait for him to get Here's open. the blitz. Six, seven coming. He's got to throw this one. Doki Williams, if he could get to it. Doki Turk could not pick up the football until it was too late. But Plunkett had to get rid of it as the blitz was on its way, led by Dave Brown. Well, Dave Brown had the coverage on Doki, but Doki turned and couldn't pick up the ball. You see 42, Simpson, no time to wait. He had to throw it before the receiver came out of his move. He threw it as high as he possibly could to give him an opportunity to catch up to it. Here you'll see the blitzers right in here. They're going to be up there and no time for him to sit back and read the play. Ray Guy will be kicking. He's going for the corner. Oh, here's the good one. Easley will watch it. It goes out of bounds. They'll mark it. Flag dropped back at the 45-yard line. It's marked at the 15. Personal foul called against the Raiders. I think what we're going to see is, well, I don't know, I don't know, I really shouldn't guess, but uh, I think it was on Frank Hawkins. We'll, we'll wait and see. I was following the football in the air myself. <laughs> Only Frank Hawkins knows if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> well. We will get the explanation. Here's the kick. The referee throws the play right there. there. Ooh, yeah. A ball to the head. Yeah. 27 offense decline. First stop. It was. He nailed Byron Walker. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something that you do late in the ball game when you're frustrated, and that was a sign of the frustration for the Raiders. And there is another look at frustration as Seattle leaves. 13 and other. There's a time in life for the young to say, I want something else, a different way. The town's the same, the people too. School is over, need something to do. The services have it, it'll really show. You'll see new places, you'll really grow in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Challenge, adventure, excitement too, a time to enjoy and see something new. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll work hard, feel really free, serving your country for all to see in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Be part of a team, be friends forever, a part of the services you won't forget ever. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. Best news ever celebration at your Renault Jeep dealer. Celebrating the best sales year ever for Renault and Jeep combined with price rollbacks on award-winning Renault Alliance sedan and sporty Renault Encore. See America's lowest priced convertible and take advantage of factory to dealer incentives on Renault Fuego. Triple award-winning Jeep Cherokee and luxurious Jeep Wagoneer. We will do whatever it takes to sell 20,000 vehicles by January 7th. Let's go back for a second to the last play the Raiders have. You're going to see the defensive backs blitzing in here. This man is going to blitz. All the defensive backs are coming in. This is why Plunkett didn't have time to wait. The rush was there. He had to throw it high. Now, see how high he throws it? Barnwell was just coming out of his move. Doki Williams. Doki Williams. If he would have had time to wait on him a little bit longer, or if he could have thrown it a little bit higher, would have given him time to get there. And also, it's sometimes in the dome, as you can see from the, the roof of the dome, it's, it has a gray area. Sometimes it's hard to pick up the football. 
Seattle has the ball, had their own 15-yard line first down. The reason, of course, they refused that penalty is that the Raiders would have had another opportunity to kick the ball this way. There's contact. Howie Long jump. The reason that Seattle refused the penalty, they want the football because they feel they can control it and control the clock. And one of the ways you control the line of scrimmage and is with your cadence. Number 75, defense. With all the tricks that Chuck Knox is pulling out today, I wouldn't be surprised if he had his quarterback staying after practice this week, really working on that cadence, a non-rhythmic cadence to try and pull him off sides. Nine minutes and 14 seconds. That is the time remaining in this AFC wild card game. Seattle out in front of Los Angeles by a score of 13 to nothing. Here's Dornick. Dan Dornick to the 23-yard line, a gain of three. It'll be second down and a couple. Bill Pakel with the tackle. Mike Davis there. Rushing offense averaging. 103 yards per game and today a total of 106 yards rushing second down and two eight and a half minutes to go here's Dornick again he got a couple that'll be close to the first down Fakel with the tackle got to lay a lot of credit to the offensive line. Watch Pratt right here as they do a little cross block to try and set up the play. The offensive lineman don't always come straight out. He comes around, picks up his linebacker. But you got to give a lot of credit to the offensive line, Charlie. You know, a lot of teams couldn't shift from a passing team to a running team the way Seattle has. Knox had to sell his team on it first and then come out and do it. Dan Dornick, 22 carries, 107 yards rushing. Robert Pratt, the game a couple of weeks ago that we saw in Kansas City, was wearing red gloves because the Kansas City Chiefs were wearing red jerseys so he wouldn't pick up any offensive holding. I noticed he's wearing white today because the Raiders are wearing white. First down, 25-yard line. David Hughes. He may get half a yard, but that's about it. Matt Millen and Bill Pakel meet him right at the line of scrimmage. The Raider Busters. It'll be second down and nine. The Raiders need to... You know, the Raiders know they're going to run the football, Charlie. They're looking at 10 yards. They're trying to make first down. The Raiders need to be stripping, grabbing for the ball, see if they can get a turnover. Seattle leading 13 to nothing. Here's Dornick, and Howie Long jumps on his back and pulls him down. He'll get two, maybe three, and the clock continues. Now seven minutes, time remaining. Kind of interesting that we haven't, as we look at this graphic, rushing today. Is Dornick's out. He's outrushed the Raiders. We really haven't talked much today about the strength of the Raiders. We haven't talked about Lester Hayes and or Mike Haynes and McElroy. We haven't talked about their, their, their defense. We've talked a lot about Howie Long making tackles up front. Incomplete. Largent trying with a diving grab, and it was incomplete. Largent does not have a reception in this ball game. As I mentioned, he has a reception in 107 straight regular season games. That's third on the all-time list by Harold Carmichael with 127 and Mel Gray with 121. But this is a postseason game. Does not count. Good protection, just a little slant, safe pass. Threw it away from the defensive back as much as he did to Largent. That was a very good pass. It was a good pass. It was a safe pass, safe play. Jeff West kicking to Clee Montgomery. Clee at the 30, 35, 40. Flag 
drop back at the 31 yard line and also one at the 35 as Montgomery tackled by Fred Young almost gave the Raiders the big play that they need 41 yards on the kick a 21 yard return but that won't stand up the Raiders a big play team and they haven't had any big plays the Seahawks have not allowed it or they've hurt themselves in this case well, offensively they have not gotten any big plays because the rush has gotten the plunket not enough time but you've got to give credit to the Seattle defense they have done what the Raiders like to do and that is pressure the quarterback and tight coverage on the illegal second. block in the back during the run back number 38 receiving team on Chester Willis so Los Angeles has the ball at their own 22 yard line when we come back with 622 left to go and the Raiders trail 13 to nothing. The Nikon FG is the 35 millimeter camera sophisticated enough for the serious photographer. Camera, pictures, human fun. <laughs> Get switched to programmed, it's simple enough for total beginners. And it's so reasonably priced, it even makes a great gift. Hey, guys, a Nikon FG with a 50-millimeter lens. Wow, I always wanted a Nikon. When do you say L.A.? I love parties. Big ones, small ones, I like them because I'm the life of the party. My idea of a good time is not sleeping with a lot of coats. I say L.A. at parties. It's a great tasting premium beer from Anheuser-Busch with half the alcohol. Sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. So I can have fun and I won't end up sleeping with the coats. Hi, George. Nice coat. I might change my mind. Hi, L.A. Sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy in the Kingdom in Seattle with six minutes, 22 seconds left to go in the AFC wild card game. And right now, this man, Chuck Knox and his team, the Seattle Seahawks, out right in front of Tom Flores and his team, the Los Angeles Raiders by a score of 13 to nothing. Raiders have the ball on 22-yard line. Jim Pluck at the quarterback. Three-man rush. Pass is complete to Marcus Allen. Allen diving close to the 32-yard line which if he makes it will be a first down. Keith Butler was the man stopping it. And now the hurry up offense by the Raiders. Officials have stopped the clock. They want the chains to come out. And so Los Angeles will simply go back in the huddle, call the play, come back out, and they'll be ready to roll when the clock is started. And this may, this may, this change, this hurry up offense may be good for the Raiders. They've huddled all game and haven't gotten anything done. Maybe a little bit of a urgency to the situation. Calling the plays at the line of scrimmage will get some, some things happening for them. Second down, less than half a yard to go for the first down. We saw Dave Craig on the phone to the coaches up in the coaching booth here. and he picks up the first down. Joe Nash and his friends stopping him at the 34-yard line. Bucket with time. Pass is complete to Marcus Allen. And Allen to the Seattle 46-yard line. A gain of 20 yards on the play. Keith Simpson. With the tackle, and here come the Raiders. First down, Seattle 46, Tom Flores, head coach of Los Angeles. Four-man run. He was waiting, I believe, for Marcus Allen to continue on his break. Marcus cut it off. Similar to the play we drew up earlier as a scouting report, he has an option to continue or to hook up. That time, Jim just ran it, ran it the wrong way. So it'll be second down and 10 at the Seattle 46 yard line. You made a good point. I'm wondering if the Raiders should have started a hurry up offense before this time. 519 left in the game. It just changes your tempo a little bit. There have been a lot of games I've played in, Charlie, in my career. You do nothing the entire ball game, and the last two possessions are the ones you score on, and you can pull something out. The winner stays in the playoff. The loser is home 
for the holiday. Incomplete. Doki Williams, the intended receiver, and is underthrown. It will be now third down and 10 at the 46-yard line of Seattle. 5-14 time remaining. Let's take another look. He's trying to get this ball to 85. Doki Williams. Doki was being face guarded, not illegally, but just eyeball to eyeball by Dave Brown. Malcolm Barnwell is the only Raiders wide receiver who has caught a ball. He is three for 34. And it's third down and 10. Look at his time. Goes deep. Marcus Allen is there. Marcus has it to the five. Marcus dives. Touchdown. 46 yards. And suddenly it's 13 to 6 with the extra point to come. Marcus Allen, Charlie, the man that we said was the big play man. They kept trying to get him the ball different ways. They finally found a way to get him deep downfield. The Raiders are back in the ball game. Here's the extra point attempt. It is good. 13 to 7. Here's Marcus Allen right here in the backfield. He's going to release around the tight end. He's going to make a little move and go straight down the field. Now, the confusing part is the tight end's going to come in there, and then the other receiver on the backfield is going to come across here, too. You see a lot of players right in that one area, and Marcus is just going to go straight down the field. Three receivers, boom. He breaks out straight down the field. A little traffic problem. Good call and a good run by Marcus. And he fights for every yard left out of the 46 needed, and he just barely got it. The key is Plunkett had time to throw. Other times he didn't have time to throw. This took a little bit longer to develop. The other thing you saw was Plunkett looking to his left to keep the safety out of the middle of the field so that if Marcus got down the field, he'd be all alone. And you talked about time. See, so he had time Looked to Look to look. his left, yep. Look yep. to his left. Plenty of time. Nobody in the middle of the field except the, the defensive back that's trailing him. B. Simpson. And look at this move. All right, Marcus. Big play. Some of that silver and black magic that we talked about in the first half. This they're, may have stirred up the pot. They're never out of it. No. They've now, come back too many times. 5.05 left to go. Onside kick or too soon? No, no. Too soon for that. I think they're going to kick it deep, play defense, and come back and do it again. Try to do it again. David Hughes and Cullen Bryant are set to return the kickoff of Chris Barr. Here's David Hughes. He almost broke it. He just was about a step away. And the crowd in the kingdom now is quieted down. <laughs> like 12 on the sound meter, right? <laughs> The, Which means a man breathing. You know? <laughs> I think that's what it is. Or, or a pin drop, as they say. But, Charlie, when you sit back and analyze this, it's 13 to 7 with 4.57 to go. Seattle has dominated the whole game. The Raiders haven't done anything. They've made one big play. If they can get the ball back and make another one, Seattle will have dominated the game, and the Raiders could win with two big plays. Now, does Seattle need to stay conservative here, or do they have to open it up a little? I think they need first downs and take some time off the clock. From the Seattle 23-yard line, first down. Dan Dornick. We'll have a couple of yards to the 25. It's second down and eight. Matt Millen and Bill Pakel are there. And, of course, the Seahawks will use all of the 30-second clock. 4.40 and counting. That is the time remaining. Eric Lane will check into the offense for the Seattle Seahawks. The Raiders won't make that many defensive changes. They're expecting him to run. 
Well, it's interesting. The Raiders play a lot of situation substitution, but they're kind of adjusting their substitutions to what Seattle puts out on the field. Second down and eight. Break the throw. Swings it out to the left side. Going it. First down. 14 yards to the 39 yard line. Mike Hayes with the tackle. It's a little quick screen to the left. This man is covering this man. When he goes to the left, he's going to go to the left. The center will go over and try to help block. But let's see what happens. There they go. Now that's a tough angle for a linebacker to go over and make a play. Any back with some shiftiness and some quickness of foot can break that tackle. Dornick, who has rushed for more than 100 yards in the ballgame, that is his first reception. 3.21 time remaining. And here's Dornick again. Four yards to the 43-yard line. Second down and six yards to go for the first down. Lyle Alzado with the tackle. Seattle offense now just to run the ball, run the ball, make some first downs, safe passes, a little quick screen like we just saw. They're not running wide. They don't have the speed to run wide without Dixon in there, Zach Dixon, or with Kurt Warner. They've got Dornick and Hughes. They're running up the middle. They're throwing some safe little passes and pick up some first downs. They can hit you in the middle, but they can't knock you out with this offense. That's the reason the Raiders are hanging in there, trailing now 13 to 7. Here's David Hughes. 47 yard line, a gain of four. This will be third down and a couple. Bill Pakel with a stop for Los Angeles. And now with the clock situation, 221 and counting, and the 30 second clock, they'll stand in the huddle, or they could, but now the Raiders will take a timeout to stop the clock. Otherwise, they would have lost all of the time to the two minute warning. Good call by Tom Flores. You think he's not in this ball game? He knows what's being done to him. He's tried to do whatever he can do to, to get the thing turned around. It hasn't been a pretty game. It's been more like a pitcher's duel, but if you like defense and strategy, we've had it here today. And an opportunity for us to thank uh, Joe Costanza, our spotters, Gary Moore and Jim Ott, and working in the booth, Barry Culver and Frank Manow. Yes. Yes, Bob. You know, Charlie, we've had the six here. There's a defensive coordinator, Bob Zeman, but today well, that's in this not ball Bob We go ahead. Anyway, I was going to say, yep. you know, in this ball game today, we have the six defensive backs that'll be in the Pro Bowl, or here today at the ball game. Mike Haynes, Lester Hayes, and McElroy for the Raiders. Right. Brown and Easley for the Seahawks. And for NBC. Ron Cherry. Right. Had a chance to. You had a chance to visit with him at halftime. He was talking with Dan Fouts and Ahmad Rashad. Here we go. Two 18s in time remaining. Third down and two. Third down and two. We're coming to one of the five plays that Chuck Knox had talked about. Five big plays. You've got to win at least four of them. This is one of the five. They've converted on only two of ten third down opportunities. Third down and two. Fantastic finishes, 1983. Denver trails Baltimore 19 to nothing as Dan Reeves calls for the impossible. And rookie quarterback John Elway responds. Following earlier TD strikes, his fourth down pass in the closing seconds is also complete. 
the amazing Broncos make up a three-touchdown deficit in the fourth quarter to beat the Colts. And Gerald Wilhite literally flips up. Every time you enjoy beverages from aluminum cans, remember, those cans are worth saving. They can be recycled and made into brand new aluminum cans. So don't throw your aluminum cans away. They're valuable, but only if you save them. Find out who's raising money through recycling in your neighborhood and save yours for them. Remember, recycling is another good reason to buy your beverages in aluminum cans. Two minutes to go in the ballgame. Seattle leading by six, 13 to seven over the Raiders. Seattle rushing 196 yards. Dan Dornick has 121 yards of the 196, and his career high is only a yard away, 122, and that was five years ago. The Raiders have two timeouts remaining. The Seahawks have two timeouts remaining. At the Raiders, 48-yard line. First down. Dan Dornick. He'll get two yards to the 46. Second down and eight. And Los Angeles will stop the clock. So the Raiders will have one timeout remaining. Don't forget tomorrow to join us as NBC Sports rocks with Sports World's music videos, the sports year in review, set to the songs of today's top groups. MTV's VJ, Martha Quinn and Bill McAtee will team up as your dynamic duo. They'll be your hosts. It's new, it's different, and you don't want to miss a single beat. Sports World music videos. And also tomorrow, Sports World will wrap up the 1984 season with a special year-end boxing review as Sports World selects its contenders for knockout of the year and fight of the year honor. And we'll also be celebrating the holidays in the Italian Alps as top international bobsledders compete in the World Cup bobsled championship from Trevina, Italy. That's all tomorrow. America loves its sports and its video music. NBC Sports Style. Plunkett facing the sidelines. He wants one more opportunity. 154, Chuck Knox. He has played the waiting game. That's a tough game to play, though, isn't it? Well, he's played a chess game. He has moved the players around. He has said to his team, we can't win the way we won. Part of the season, we have to go with a new way to win, and he moved them around, and he's got them ahead. Second down and eight at the 46-yard line of the Raiders. Here's Hughes. Diving to the 44, maybe the 43-yard line. It'll be third down and five. And Los Angeles, they'll stop the clock. They'll use their last timeout. Stopping it at 147. Figuring that they have that opportunity because they can control the clock once they get the football. They can control it. They have no timeouts left. Third down and five. We're coming to another of those key situations in the ballgame. If the, if the Seahawks do have to punt, then that means that the Raiders will have the football and they can control the clock offensively. They'll have at least four opportunities from scrimmage. The Raiders have, have had an up-and-down year, but really Tom Flores has done a good job. He lost Jim Plunkett early on. Mark Wilson came in and played very well. They lost three games in the middle of their season, and they came back and won a string of ball games, only to lose their last game. If they hadn't have lost against the Steelers last week, they would have been home in L.A. But these are the defending Super Bowl champions, and they still have the title until someone knocks them out. And we still have one minute and 47 seconds left to go in the ballgame. And Tom Flores has won two Super Bowl championships in the five years he has coached there, this being his sixth year, and what a great job he has done. Ron Essig is in, to, in the ballgame, was scheduled to start at left tackle, did not start because he's had the flu. He is in. Third down and five. 43 yard. And Bob Kreider has come out. Eric Lane. And he will come up two yards short of the first down. Moves from the 43 to the 41 yard line. It'll be fourth down and a couple. Bill Bakel with the tackle. 
The clock now will continue to move. The Raiders cannot stop it. Seattle will take the full 30 seconds. I would imagine let them stop the clock, take the penalty, and then kick it. I, they don't need to take the penalty, Charlie. I think they're they're quick enough and alert enough that they can run it down to about two seconds and then get the ball off without taking the, the additional penalty. But the way they're standing in the huddle, looks like they may do it. They may just <laughs> go ahead and just let it run down. Yeah. Why rush at the last possible moment? Seven seconds in the 30 second clock. And Clee Montgomery is standing all alone at the 15 yard line. There it is, delay of game. Oh, still fourth down. We've talked about our Michelo most valuable player, but we're going to hold that to right to the end of this ball game. 54 seconds left in the season for one or the other. 13-7, Seattle leads. the quarterback of the Buffalo Bills. 94 yards away and 45 seconds left. There's only three teams that have ever gone back to back as far as winning Super Bowls. The Raiders had an opportunity here today. It's very tough to do it. They've got 45 seconds to move the ball down the field, 94 yards. And the crowd, the 12th man, they retired the 12th man jersey. Which fan on the back last week, and here's Marcus Allen. The clock is moving. They cannot stop it with a timeout. Hurry up offense, 35 seconds and counting. Bruce Schultz with the tackle. They'll mark the ball at the 15-yard line. Flag is down. Pass is complete to Frank Hawkins. Hawkins is headed for the sideline to stop the clock. Gets a block, but a marker was dropped back at the 16-yard line. 15 seconds left to the ball game. The play covered 23 yards, but they'll bring it back. The Niccolo most valuable player for today's game is Dan Dornick of the Seattle Seahawks. 123 yards rushing, 27 carries, one reception for 14 yards. Total offense for Dan Dornick, 137 yards. And that means that Niccolo will donate $1,000 to the United Way on the behalf of Dan Dornick, the MVP. Way to go, Dan. You deserve it. Second and six, 10 yard line, 15 seconds left for the Raiders as defending Super Bowl champions. The Seahawks may be on their way. Here we go, three deep. Christensen is there, Barnwell is there. Raiders intercepted. Kenny Easley with the interception.
Chuck Knox change the complete offensive complexion of what the Seahawks have been doing. Well, Charlie, we talked earlier that he really eliminated the strength of the Raiders, and that was their defense. You didn't see Hayes or Haynes involved in this ball game very much and emphasize his strength, which was their defense, put easily back on the punt returns. And is there any wonder why Chuck Knox is the NFL Coach of the Year? The final score, Seattle 13, the Raiders 7. For Bob Greasy, I'm Charlie Jones in the Kingdom, the wild card champion. The Seahawks now stay tuned. Bob Costas will be coming up with NFL 84 right after these messages. Me and the crew, we're, we're taking this road across Alaska. And we haven't even gotten to the hard part yet. I guess you could say we're hooking up the last frontier to the lower 48. Yeah, hooking up here, it's... It's different. See, this road's got to be able to handle an Alaskan freeze. And then, the thaw. But I'll tell you, when it's finished, and it's on the map, we can say, we did that. It's for guys like T.J. Donahue that we make sure every Budweiser is the best it can be. Made with the choicest ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and brewed with the kind of pride T.J. puts into his work. So to T.J. and all you guys out there like him, this Bud's for you. So the reign of the Los Angeles Raiders as world champions has been ended by the Seattle Seahawks. What an irony as Dan Dorning comes up big today with 123 yards. The Seahawks had only one other 100-yard performance from a running back all season. Eric Lane did it against Minnesota before today. So now our playoff lineup next weekend on NBC is set. The Seahawks and the Dolphins from the Orange Bowl. You'll recall that in that very same location, Seattle eliminated Miami a year ago. It'll begin with a 12 noon pregame show and a 12.30 kickoff on NBC. And then on Sunday, Pittsburgh at Denver, NFL 84 at 3.30. The kickoff at Mile High Stadium at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Here's tonight's lineup on NBC. It begins with the Smurfs Christmas special, followed by Double Trouble as the twins spend Christmas in New York City, chaperoned by several members of the NFL 84 staff. Then Nell's bell jingles when she sees her handsome new neighbor on Gimme a Break, followed by the new comedy program, Spencer. Then it's Linda Carter and Alani Anderson in Partners in Crime all tonight on NBC. As for us, we'll see you next Saturday and Sunday with NFL 84. Thank you for being with us today. So long for now, everybody.